Tonight, we had night two of WrestleMania. Coming off the high of night one, which was an excellent night. One of the best nights of WrestleMania this company has ever produced. It was all about the main event tonight. What was Triple H going to do in the main event with Roman Reigns and Cody Rhodes? You had a champion coming into tonight. Well over 900 days as the champion. His third straight WrestleMania as a heel defending that title in the main event. On the other side, you had Cody Rhodes, who has yet to be beaten since he came back to the company one year ago at WrestleMania, had those great matches with Seth Rollins, Torres Peck, won the Hell in a Cell match, went away, had the comeback story, won the Royal Rumble in the WrestleMania main event for the very first time, and it had a big fight feel to it. And Triple H had an important decision to make. And I don't want to sit here and pretend that it was an easy decision to make, you know, like, oh, it's a no-brainer. You had a hard decision to make. You've had a good thing going with Roman Reigns now for a very long time. You're very close to a 1,000 days as champion with this man. You have the Bloodline story going, which has carried his television shows now for the better part of a year. What would SmackDown be like without the Bloodline, right? How many times have I said that during the SmackDown reviews? If you take the Bloodline out of the show, what do you have? So Triple H had to make a decision. Was tonight the right night to take the title off of Roman Reigns? I believe the answer to that is yes. Cody Rhodes has gotten over the way that I think the company had hoped. He's had the crowd support. The crowd hasn't turned against him. He's proven to be a merchandise mover, and he's helping them sell tickets. And it seemed like Cody had all the momentum in his favor going into this show tonight. He came out tonight, his family was out there at ringside. Negative one, Brody Lee Jr. was out there at ringside. Right? His daughter was out there at ringside. What was Triple H going to do? I said coming into this show, I thought Cody would win. If it were up to me, Cody Rhodes would have won. I wouldn't be mad if Roman Reigns left with the championship because, look, I've enjoyed this bloodline story like everybody else has. As I sit here and watch what they did, though, in that main event, that was a complete dog shit ending to that WrestleMania main event. The way they went about doing it, I don't agree with at all. It was a real shame because it was a dog shit ending to an otherwise fantastic main event. Roman Reigns and Cody Rhodes went in there and had an excellent WrestleMania main event. Anybody who doubted whether or not, you know, Cody and Roman. You know, are they going to work well together? What kind of match is Cody going to have in the main event? For his first WrestleMania main event, Cody passed the test with flying colors, right? Roman's had enough of them by now under his belt. 
He's had a lot of stinkers. He's had a few good ones. So they were having a fantastic match, which is why it bums me out that we got the kind of finish that we did here tonight in that main event. The fans were ready for it. Cody had some boos when he came out. It was not universal 100% praise when he came out tonight, but as the match went on, it was building and it was building and it was building. You had Solo Sokoa out there constantly getting involved until the referee finally had enough and he sent him to the back, right? And everybody cheered. And then we got the ref bump and we had the Usos come in and everyone's like, oh, here we go again. Here comes Kevin Owens and Sami Zayn to even the odds, right? Very poetic. Kevin Owens hits a stunner on Roman Reigns. Sami Zayn hits the Huluva kick on Roman Reigns. They clear the ring. So now Solo Soko has been ejected. The Usos have been taken out of the equation. Now it's a fair fight, right? Now it's one-on-one. -on -one. Let's see what happens. It was building and building. They had it right there. The crowd was ready for it. And then they just had it ripped away from them. In the worst possible way. I almost would have... I almost would have had more respect for this finish if Roman would have actually beaten him. When I say clean, I don't necessarily mean clean, no, no shortcuts or anything. But even if he would have had like a thumb to the eye or you know, some kind of Cody comes off the ropes with a disaster kick and he thumbs him in the eye, puts his knee out, Cody lands on his balls or something, something like that. Instead, instead, we have Solo Sokoa coming back out behind the referee's back, Samoan Spike, the spear and the pin. More interference in this match. What they did tonight, you know, we were in Los Angeles tonight for WrestleMania. It may as well have been Cardiff because that's what they gave us. They gave us the clash at the castle finish minus the Samoan spike, but that was the night Solo Sokoa made his debut. And Solo Sokoa is the one who cost Drew McIntyre the championship. That was in September. And you look back at that and WWE made the right decision by not putting the title on Drew McIntyre in September because we got all this great shit from September to now with the Sami Zayn story in the bloodline. It would have been a mistake to take the title of Roman Reigns back in September. And there were a lot of people very upset about that finish too. There were a lot of people very upset about the finish in Montreal at Elimination Chamber when Sami Zayn did not win the championship. But I said, Sami Zayn's not going to win the championship. Sami Zayn is not the right guy to win the championship. They're not going to do it. They're not going to put the titles on him. He has another story with Kevin Owens. We saw that play out in the main event of WrestleMania last night, but this felt different. This felt different. And you had a couple of guys come out who had been wronged by Roman Reigns, got a little bit of revenge on him. Fair fight. They had it. It was right there for the taking. And they got in their own way. And I believe Triple H made a mistake tonight. That ending sucked. That was a terrible way for the WrestleMania main event to come to an end. That might be fine for Backlash. That might be fine for Clash at the Castle. That might be fine for any other event. But when you have a situation like this where you have this heel champion who has already come out of two previous WrestleManias in a row keeping his title, and this is what you do for the third year in a row, and you have Solo Sokoa run in and hit the Samoan spike and... Roman Reigns picks up a win. I mean, that's your WrestleMania finish? Really? That's the best ending you could come up with for WrestleMania? Now, look, I guess they got what they wanted because everybody is talking about it. I guess that's what Triple H and Vince McMahon wanted. Everybody now is talking about this finish. I see a lot of anger. Some people like the finish. A lot more people seem not to like the finish. A lot of very angry people out there. But they got what they wanted. And now everybody is talking about this. I'm sure everybody will tune into television this week to see where the story goes. I'm not sure where they're going to go with this. Cody Rhodes is not dead. Everybody's saying that they Lugered him. Cody Rhodes has been Lex Luger. Let me remind you that Lex Luger celebrated a win by countout with balloons and did not win the championship. That's very different than what we saw tonight where somebody interfered in the match and cost Cody Rhodes the win. That is not the same thing. So I would not say that he was lugered per se, but does it hurt Cody? I think it does, yes. I think it does. He went in there tonight talking about how he has to finish the story and he couldn't do it. Interference or not, it takes the wind out of his sails a little bit. Now we'll see. If Cody Rhodes can sustain his popularity, what are they going to do with him in the meantime? And what, What's the plan here? 
If the plan is to get to 1,000 days at the end of May, okay, you get to 1,000 days, then what? Like, who cares? I certainly hope that's not the only reason that Triple H kept the belts on Roman Reigns. So he can rack up another accolade. Hopefully he has a better reason than that. What's the direction here? You're going to put the titles on Cody at SummerSlam? What's the difference between SummerSlam and WrestleMania? You're going to put the titles on the same guy. Well, I mean, who else is there? Seth Rollins? Seth Rollins never got beat by Roman Reigns. I guess you can go back to Seth, right? He beat Logan Paul. Who else? He's beating everybody else. Jey Uso, right? Everybody's saying, oh, what about Jey Uso? I, I absolutely agree there is a story to be told with Roman Reigns and Jey Uso. And I think we will eventually get Roman Reigns one-on-one -on -one with Jey Uso. Do I think Jey Uso is the one to win the undisputed championship and get a run? No. I don't see that happening. So I'm not sure exactly where they're going to go with this now. This felt like a missed opportunity to me here tonight. I think it was a mistake that Triple H made. I think he made the wrong call. I think you could have continued that bloodline story even if Roman would have lost those championships tonight. He opted to go a different way. Not angry that Roman is the champion, but I'm upset because there was a great finale there to that main event that would have really closed this WrestleMania on a high note, making this one of maybe the best WrestleManias that they've ever done. Uh, as it was, this takes it down a few notches because it was the main event. But night one was easily the better of the two nights, right? All the praise I heaped upon night one last night uh, and how night two was going to have a challenge to top what we saw on Saturday. It did not. It was not a terrible night. This was not a bad night of WrestleMania. There were some really good matches on the show, including the main event. Even if you put the finish aside for a second, I know it's important to people. You got to stick the landing. The finish matters. This was a very good WrestleMania. This was not as good as night one. When you put it all together, this will definitely go down as one of the best WrestleManias that they've done in many years. Many years. And I like 38. 39, though, blew it out of the water. But that's what's so frustrating to me. They could have stuck the landing tonight. And I think it was a missed opportunity. I think Triple H made a mistake. We had the Intercontinental Championship. This is another thing, by the way. Now that I, now that I uh, really look at all these results, there was another common thread here to these matches tonight. We had Roman Reigns defending his championships in the main event. And he comes out yet again as a winner. Okay. We had Gunther defending the Intercontinental title against Drew McIntyre and Sheamus. I love Gunther. I think Gunther is great. I think Gunther a year from now may be in the position that Roman Reigns is in. He should be competing for the top championship. He should be king of the ring in May. They kept the Intercontinental Championship on Gunther. Again, here's an opportunity to put the title on Sheamus. You want to have a, a WrestleMania moment. We had Sheamus and Gunther at Clash at the Castle. Sheamus couldn't get the job done. They had a match on television. Not long after that, Sheamus again couldn't get the job done. And I said, well, you know what? All is fine because they're going to tell the story of coming back to it at WrestleMania. Sheamus always wanted to be the Intercontinental Champion. It's the one title that's eluded him. What a great moment to circle back around to it at WrestleMania in front of 75,000 people. And finally, Sheamus gets that elusive win over Gunther, right? What a great story. Well, here we are at WrestleMania. Sheamus ends up back in the ring with Gunther, and Gunther walks out as the Intercontinental Champion. Why? Why? Don't tell me that, well, he has to break the Honky Tonk Man's record. Fuck the Honky Tonk Man. We're not talking about the Honky Tonk Man. I don't give a shit about the Honky Tonk Man. All this talk about records that need to be broken. How many records are we going to break here? Got to get Roman to a thousand days. We got to get Gunther. Why don't we just keep the titles on all these guys for the next five years and say, fuck it. Why do we do that? Bianca Belair comes into WrestleMania tonight, retains her title against Asuka in an excellent match, and now passes the one-year mark as the Raw Women's Champion. There was a pattern here on this show tonight. But the Intercontinental Championship match was fucking awesome. I'm not going to sit here and bash the match. The match was uh, absolutely fantastic. But I'll tell you what I will bash. Bobby Lashley. Bobby Lashley was relegated this year to the Andre the Giant Memorial Battle Royal 
on SmackDown Friday night, which was a disgrace. But there were extenuating circumstances. Whatever the hell's going on with Bray Wyatt, he was unavailable. So they didn't do the match, which honestly was for the better because I think the match would have been shit. But it took away a spot for Bobby Lashley on the WrestleMania card. Now, Bobby Lashley's been going around talking about how I'm going to be at SoFi Stadium and I'm throwing out an open challenge. I want to kick somebody's ass. He was doing it even a few days ago. Even after he won the Battle Royal on Friday, they did a segment in the back with him and he said, I'm going to be there at SoFi. I want a fight. Right? Open challenge. You know what Bobby Lashley did tonight? He came out and he waved. He came out with his trophy, like he won the fucking spelling bee in school. And he waved and he posed to the crowd in his street clothes. And that was the last we saw of him. What happened to the open challenge? But you know what? I just realized, you know what? WWE's right. We don't have time for Bobby Lashley. You know why? You know why we don't have time for Bobby Lashley? Because here comes Shane McMahon. We had to make time for the return of Shane McMahon to come out and do his, uh, shook, and, his, his shook and jive down the aisle and throw his stupid fucking phantom punches. Shane McMahon gets into the ring for a match with The Miz. Oh boy, I can't wait to see this, right? Shane McMahon does a leapfrog and Shane McMahon blows his fucking knee out. Now, I don't wish ill upon Shane McMahon. I hope it's not as serious as it looked. I wish him a, a speedy recovery. I have no ill will towards Shane McMahon. What I have ill will towards is the fact that you have a guy like a Bobby Lashley or an LA Knight, and Bobby Lashley is a much bigger star on this roster than LA Knight is, but you saw the reaction that LA Knight got the other night on SmackDown, right? In that city, he would have come out at WrestleMania and gotten a big reaction, right? Even if he just went out there to get his ass kicked. L.A. Knight, Bobby Lashley, we don't have room on the show for these guys, but we got a big surprise for everybody. We'll send 53-year-old Shane McMahon out there to throw the worst fucking punches in the world, and then you saw what happened. Snoop Dogg has to, he has to step in now, and they call an audible, and Snoop Dogg is like an old vet. He goes in there and says, we'll call it on the fly. So he punches the Miz, he delivers the worst people's elbow in the world, but he's Snoop Dogg, so it's okay, because he can make it look cool. He made the most of a bad situation. What a fucking disaster. You don't have room for Bobby Lashley on this show, but you got to send Shane McMahon out there? Really, that was their great idea? That was their big surprise for WrestleMania this year? Pat McAfee on night one, Shane McMahon on night two? Tonight was historic for a lot of reasons. But tonight was historic for another reason. And I'm not going to get too deep into this because it's already late and we got a lot to talk about here. But uh, I will very likely be doing a video on this tomorrow, especially if the news breaks and the news is official tomorrow. But just so you guys are aware, because you may have missed it. Uh, we may have just witnessed the final WrestleMania under the ownership and, and full control of Vince McMahon. This may have been it. This may end up being the final WrestleMania under, officially under Vince McMahon, because there was a bombshell report from CNBC earlier this afternoon before WrestleMania started, and other websites have since confirmed what's going on. Deadline.com had a story, but it originated with CNBC that it looks like WWE is about to be sold to Endeavor, the parent company of UFC. And it sounds like what will be happening is they're going to form a new uh, publicly traded company that WWE and UFC will basically be folded into. So they'll still exist on their own, but they're going to both be under this newly formed publicly traded company that Endeavor will own. That's what it sounds like. Big multi-billion dollar deal. It's not official yet, but it sounds pretty official. And the word is that it could be announced as soon as tomorrow. So. If that happens, uh, I will be doing a video on that tomorrow, very likely, so keep an eye out for that. But yeah, we may have just witnessed the final uh, WrestleMania that is uh, fully under the ownership and auspices of Vince McMahon. You know what? After that finish tonight, I'm not so sure that wouldn't be uh, the worst thing in the world. This is your WrestleMania 39, night number two review. I am the Solid Monster. Thank you for choosing me. For your WrestleMania review, we had a lot of people last night. We had several thousand people uh, live last night, which means a lot to me, and I thank you for that. You're going to see 
uh, your super chats and alerts popping up on screen at some point here. I'm pausing and unpausing them because there's so many of them coming in. Uh, but we do have uh, super chats are open if you want to send them on in. We'll be hanging out a little bit later on. I'm sure you guys have a lot to say uh, about this WrestleMania show. Look at this guy. Solo Bushwhacker has a lot to say about this show. He looks like the one who booked that finish to the main event. So yeah, get those super chats on in. Also, I need at least a thousand likes on this video. We do a little thing at the end called Be the Booker. Uh, I will do it if we can hit a thousand likes here on this video to help out the video. So go ahead and hit that thumbs up button. I know we're getting very close. Uh, we got 4,000 people in here and counting. So yeah, hit that thumbs up. There ain't no excuse not to get at least a thousand likes. Channel memberships are open. Hey, Boots, my God, Boots gifted 50 channel memberships right before I went live. You can join as a member on your own, but he gifted 50 channel memberships, 5-0. <laughs> that is a new record here for the channel. So, Boots, you are a beast. I don't know what else to say. You are the fucking man. Boots, thank you. And uh, let me see those custom Look, emojis if Richie, you are a channel Richie member. Over here dropping all this chat. money Here's Fire on Panda. Hey, and then I we'll uh, pause the know, alerts here for a little bit. I think you rock. I don't mean the rock, a rock. You rock. And I just wanted you to know that. A Fire Panda, holy shit. What was that, a Hundy Bomb? Fire Panda, I love you. Thank you very much. I appreciate that more than you know. Uh, also, one other note here. A little bit later on in the stream, I know some of you may be here for this reason as well. Uh, I'm going to be picking three winners at random for the WrestleRumble.com uh, Classics Contest, which is, uh, I'm always a fan of the classics. So, Classic Intercontinental, Winged Eagle, Tag Team Straps. Uh, Wrestle Rumble is giving away a bunch of replica belts to three lucky winners. I will be choosing the winners at random a little bit later on. We have 4,000 people in here now. We had 4,000 entries in the contest. And uh, I'm just here to hope be the master of ceremony. So we'll be doing that uh, a little bit later on. But let's talk about this show. We got to get through this uh, WrestleMania show here. Because we had WrestleMania night number two. Kicking off with uh, The Miz and Snoop Dogg in the ring. The same exact way that it kicked off on night one. And they were in the ring and they were bullshitting back and forth about stuff that frankly I don't really care about. Because I want to get to the action. And the opening match tonight, it should not come as a surprise to anybody, was Brock Lesnar. Who was looking to get home as quickly as possible. He was looking to beat the traffic in LA. He was in the opening match. One on one against Omos. Now, what was the one thing I said about this match coming into this show? They need to keep this brief. There's no reason for this match to go longer than five minutes. I don't know that Omos has ever had a singles match longer than that, frankly. And if they keep it short, it may not be too bad. So we had Brock out there. He's trying to take Omos off of his feet early in the match. He can't do it. Omos gives him two straight body slams and then gets him in the dreaded bear hug. Boy, they really were going for the uh, the Hogan-Andre effect here, weren't they? So he got the dreaded bear hug. He drove Brock back into the corner, gave him another body slam, right back to the bear hug. Brock hulked out of it. Omos caught him coming off the ropes, choke slammed him for a near fall. So far, so good, right? Very basic match, but so far, so good. Brock came back and got a German suplex, got a second German, got a third German. Brock got him up on his shoulders for an F5, but he fell down. He was clutching his lower back. Omos went for the tree slam. Brock slipped out, got him back up on his shoulders, hit one F5, and pinned him one, two, three. Uh, Brock was purple at the end of this match, as he, as he does tend to be within a few minutes of his matches. Like, literally, they hit a close-up of his face. He was purple. And... Uh, he did a great job of selling his lower back even as he left the ring and he was going back up the ramp. He kept looking back at Omos, again, purple, clutching his back, like, you know, just selling the effects of the beating that uh, Omos gave him. Omos, I will say, Omos did well taking those Germans. It's not easy, you know. He's a big fucking guy. He's seven foot three, and he could easily take those moves and make it look very awkward, but he went over for those suplexes. It looked fine. Could have easily looked like crap. 
Short and to the point, this was exactly what it needed to be. You know what the saddest part about this was? The saddest part about this match? You compare it to the opening match from night one, this was better than John Cena against Austin Theory. Of the two opening matches at WrestleMania this year, this one was the better of the two. That's sad. We have the women's WrestleMania showcase match, Ronda Rousey and Shayna Baszler against Liv Morgan and Raquel Rodriguez against Natty and Shotzi against Chelsea Green and Sonya Deville. Uh, Shotzi, this is, this is a weird thing happened early in the match. I don't know if everybody necessarily picked up on it, but early on in the match, Shotzi did a dive through the ropes. Natty was standing on the ropes, holding them open. And Shotzi did a suicide dive through the ropes, wiped out Shayna Baszler and Sonya Deville on the floor. And when Baszler uh, hit the ground, she immediately grabbed her, her right, looked like her right ankle. She grabbed her foot. I didn't notice it right away. When the match was over and I saw her with only one boot on, I went back to see where the hell did this happen. Uh, she noticeably grabbed her foot on that spot. We didn't see her again until the very end of the match. And like I said, when we did, she had one boot on and one boot off. So it looks like she got hurt on that spot. Natty and Shotzi gave Sonya a heart attack uh, before Natty slammed Chelsea onto her partner. Natty stacked the two of them on top of each other, put them both into double sharpshooter, which got the biggest reaction of anything in this entire match. And Liv Morgan broke it up by giving Natty a code breaker. Then she gave Shotzi an oblivion. Baszler and Rousey, though, broke up the pin. They beat up Liv. And Shotzi, before Rousey tapped out Shotzi with an armbar to win the women's showcase at WrestleMania. Uh, Ronda did nothing because she has a fracture in her arm that is not yet fully healed. And in fact, she had the brace on her arm as well, like she did on TV the other week. Uh, so the armbar was all that, sh that uh, Ronda did. And again, Shayna looked to be hurt, so she couldn't do much either. You got the walking wounded here in this match. Uh, this was nothing like the men's showcase match. That men's showcase match on night one was fantastic. Uh, this was average at best. This had, this had no heat. You know, outside of the sharpshooter spot, this had no heat. And again, Ronda was just not able to do much. So she was pretty much just there to smile and do an arm bar, and that was the end of it. There really wasn't much to it. After the match, they sent Bobby Lashley, old Bob, out in his street clothes with his Andre the Giant Memorial Battle Royal Trophy, which we will never see again. Well, we will. We'll see it a year from now. Maybe he brings it out on Raw Monday night, but after that, we won't see it again for another year. So he lugged his trophy out on stage, big smile on his face, holds up the trophy for everybody to see, poses with it. That's it. That was the sole appearance for Bobby Lashley on this entire show. A total disgrace. Why even hype the idea of there being an open challenge or him looking for a fight if this was all that you were going to do with him? I don't understand that. I don't understand that. Why even do those teases unless something changed? Well, clearly something changed. Why do that if this was all that you had planned for this man? I don't get that. I don't understand it. Help me make sense out of it. And maybe they were dealt a bad hand with the Bray Wyatt situation, whatever illness or injury he may be going through right now. But it's not like we've seen Bray on television. I mean, Bray, Bray has been off television the entire month of March. We haven't seen this man in over four weeks. So they knew coming in that he was not going to be available. This is what you come up with for Bobby Lashley to do? I thought that was a disgrace. So now with these... Uh, pre-show matches out of the way we get to the good stuff now we get to the good stuff we get to the triple threat match for the intercontinental championship the most important and the best intercontinental championship match that we have seen here at wrestlemania in many many years gunther defending against sheamus and drew mcintyre and so you guys know it's very important to point out that this match is, uh, or was, presented by Mike's Harder Lemonade. I've heard of Mike's Hard Lemonade. I, I was not aware of the fact that we now have a uh, Mike's Harder Lemonade. That's news to me. I did not know that, but you learn something new every day. 
So we got mics all over the barricades, mics uh, lemonade on the uh, ring posts, just like they did with TurboTax the night before, and Cinnamon Toast Crumb. Boy, they went they went nuts with the sponsorships. They weren't lying when they said that this was their biggest year ever for WrestleMania when it came to the money they made off of uh, sponsorships. I mean, it was both nights. It was all over the show, right? We had the TurboTax, we had the cereal, we had the lemonade. There were a couple of other things that they uh, they were promoting, the new Exorcist movie. This was all over the place. But I guess they did the Mike's, uh, Mike's uh, lemonade thing here because these guys in this match hit harder. I assume that's why they did it here. So they had Titus O'Neil uh, back out again on commentary like they did last night. Don't ask me why. I mean, look, I, I like Titus, but I have no idea why he was on commentary for this match. If you like strong style, if you like your professional wrestling with bigger guys who just go in there and beat the holy hell out of each other, then this was the match of the weekend for you. And in fact, now that WrestleMania is in the books, I think I can safely say that I think this right here uh, was probably the match of the weekend. This was probably the best WrestleMania match of the entire week. This was a fight with these three men. Drew took out Gunther with the Claymore kick. Kind of caught him in the shoulder, but right from the bell. Remember when Shawn Michaels uh, super kicked Triple H at the beginning of the triple threat match at Survivor Series that one year with John Cena? As soon as the bell rang, right? Waited a few seconds. Sean super kicked Triple H, and everybody was like, holy shit. Like, everybody popped, right? So that was kind of what they were going for here, where uh, he took out Gunther because he wanted to go one-on-one -on -one with his boy. So we got one-on-one -on -one Drew and Sheamus here early in this match. Drew took out uh, Gunther with the Claymore. Sheamus set up for the 10 beats. They went back and forth for a while. Gunther finally came back. And he went after both men. He chopped the hell out of Sheamus. Hit a backbreaker. Put him in a Boston Crab. McIntyre kicked Gunther, who no-sold it. And he ended up letting go of the hold on his own. Gunther and McIntyre traded some stiff chops. Gunther's chest was... I mean, this guy, you know, he dishes it. But, you know, he had to take it in this match, too. It's not very often that we see him in the ring with uh, one guy, let alone two you know, as big or bigger than him. I feel like we've just seen him in a lot of matches with guys who are smaller than him, right? Ricochet uh, on the main roster. Back in NXT UK, it was people like Tyler Bate and Pete Dunne or Ilya Dragunov. So here, you know, he's in the ring with guys who are as big, if not a little bit bigger and more muscular than, than he is. And he took a beating too. And his chest was... Beat red here. Sheamus, was, his chest was all bruised and bloody. He got Gunther in position for the 10 beats. Sheamus and McIntyre, they alternated, hitting Gunther with chops and the uh, clubbing forearm shots. Crowd counted along. Then Sheamus gave Drew almost 30 beats on the apron. I think it was about 27 or 28. He, uh, he quit at that point. And the crowd gave him a standing ovation for it. Not the first standing ovation or I should say not the last, standing ovation that these men would get in this match. Gunther got back in, he wiped out Sheamus, and he's yelling at him, get up. Get up. Repeatedly, he's yelling at him, get up. When he did, he killed him with a lariat. Uh, but Sheamus kicked out. Then it was Drew's turn. He took Gunther down with the Future Shock DDT. Tried for the Claymore, but he missed. Gunther hit the power bomb. tried for the pin. Drew kicked out. So Gunther then made the climb. To the top rope. He got cut off by Sheamus. He hit an avalanche white noise from the middle rope. Then came the Celtic cross and he dropped Gunther and he went for the pin and Gunther kicked out. Now, if this was Scott Hall, if this was Razor Ramon, you ain't kicking out of the Razor's edge. I don't think I ever saw a single person in WWE, I don't know about WCW, but in WWE, never saw a single person kick out of the Razor's edge. Everybody else who I've seen use this move, they always kick out. So, of course, he kicked out here. If anybody else does it, they always kick out. Sheamus got the cloverleaf applied, and Gunther got to the bottom rope. The problem is, in a triple threat match, there are no rope breaks. So, nothing the referee could do about it. So, Sheamus pulled him to the center of the ring until McIntyre applied a sleeper hold to Sheamus from behind. He fought out of it. Knee strike for McIntyre. Knee strike for Gunther. 
crowd was all in for Sheamus. This is what I mean when I say, like, this was, again, a lost opportunity here for them to make a big moment on a show where they always are about big moments. And we got a lot of them on night one. We got far more big moments on night one than we did on night two. We got some moments on night two. They weren't very good moments. But we had more of those moments on night one than we did on night two. So the crowd was all in on Sheamus. He was setting up for the bro kick, and he nailed it. Looks like this is it. This is a big moment, right? Gets the one, gets the two. Drew McIntyre then reaches in and pulls him out to the floor before the referee could count three. And I was invested in this match. I'm sitting here going, you fucking bastard. <laughs> right, he, he got me hot here watching this thing. So Drew ends up wiping out Sheamus then after that with a dive on the floor, rolls him back inside to set up for the Claymore kick. But when he came out of the corner, Sheamus hit the brogue. And he fell on top of Drew. He got the one. He got the two. And Drew kicked out before the count of three. And I thought that was going to be it. Because when I was talking about this match, I said, Gunther does not have to be the one to take the losing fall. You can protect him by having Sheamus pin Drew McIntyre. So I thought that might be it. I thought that might be the moment it happens. But Drew kicked out. Then McIntyre hit Sheamus with the Claymore kick. I almost called it the Cleavage kick. Uh, the Claymore, I don't know why this auto-corrected to that. The, uh, the Claymore kick, Sheamus kicked out. You knew that you know, Gunther's obviously licking his chops somewhere off camera watching these two guys beating the hell out of each other. We got a back-and-forth slugfest with Sheamus and Drew until Sheamus caught him again with a brogue, but he couldn't capitalize on it quick enough, and Gunther came flying off the top rope. From out of nowhere, like off camera, out of camera frame. Uh, comes diving off the top rope with a big splash to break up the pain. It looked like a giant meteor flying out of the sky. Gunther then powerbombed Sheamus on top of Drew. And then powerbombed Drew and got the stack pin to retain the title. I've been told by the chat that it is from here on out the cleavage kick. Well... There you go. We, we've just renamed the move. <laughs> what can I say about this match? Unbelievable. This match was unbelievable. Michael Cole, Corey Graves, and Titus O'Neil gave this match a standing ovation. They, they stood up. They were applauding these men when this match was over. I lost track of how many standing ovations they got from the crowd to the announcers. At least three of them uh, throughout this match. This was an incredible battle. And it was a battle. Uh, this was everything I was hoping it would be. This is the match I was most looking forward to on this show. From like, you know, from a match perspective, I said, these guys are going to go in there. There's no way these guys are going to go in there and have anything but an excellent match. It's impossible. Impossible. This is the biggest stage that Gunther has ever been on in his career. And you look at the level of talent in this match. You knew that this was going to be something special. And all three of these men went in there and they killed it. This was the best intercontinental championship match of WrestleMania in at least 30 years. At least. At least since the latter match at Madison Square Garden. And with the benefit of, of hindsight, we'll let some more time go by and then we'll see where it, where it ranks on the list. Because, yeah, there, are, there is a recency bias here, but I am very confident to sit here and tell you there has not been a better intercontinental title match on this show in at least 30 years. This was fantastic. I was very uh, bummed when it was over. This was not a good night for, uh, for Solomon's here because I was looking forward to seeing either a Sheamus Intercontinental title win and or Roman Reigns finally losing his championships in the main event. I got neither one of them. So uh, I'm a little irritated about that. Very disappointed. However, I will note Sheamus did not take the pin in this match. It was Drew McIntyre who got pinned. So we have money in the bank coming up at the O2 Arena in London in July. We have SummerSlam coming up from Ford Field in Detroit. Right? Sheamus didn't get pinned. They could circle back around to Gunther and Sheamus one-on-one, -on -one and they can do the title change there. They could do the title change in London in July. You won't get the 75 or 80,000 people like they had in the big stadium tonight. That that's see that's the moment that I thought they were building to. WrestleMania, 
I mean, they could have done it at Clash of the Castle, but it would have been premature. But here, you're you're back in front of a big stadium crowd, and Sheamus finally, you know, in, in the third encounter with Gunther, pulls it off. And Triple H decided, no, we're going to keep it going. Look at Richie Rich keep the championship here, on dropping Gunther. all this money on me. That hey, was his call. I just want you to know, I think you rock. I don't mean the rock, a rock, you rock. And I just wanted you to know that. Hey, Armando just dropped a $100 super chat. Yes, yes, yes. Here on this stream, Armando, thank you very much. I appreciate the support. I appreciate all the support. All the super chats that we have coming in. You guys are awesome. So uh, keep it coming. We're going to be reading through your messages a little bit later on. Uh, let me just remind, because we got people coming in, we got people going out. Uh, let me just remind everybody that's here, if you like the video, it will help get the video into the uh, recommendeds and the algorithm here on the channel to get it out to more people. So let's uh, shoot for 1,500. Let's see if we can do it. We're already at 1,200. 1,500 should be a piece of cake. We got the Raw Women's Championship on the line. It was Bianca Belair defending her title against Asuka. And like the Women's Championship match last night, these two matches had something in common the build to these matches was incredibly weak. For this match here, it was virtually non-existent. But like night one, these two women showed up here on night two and they kicked ass. They went out there and they had a tremendous match. Uh, I like the Charlotte and Rhea match better. If I had to rank them, I thought that was the better of the two women's matches. Uh, but both of them I thought were excellent. There was a spot here in this match where Bianca suplexed Asuka. Uh, back into the ring from the middle rope. Bianca was inside on the middle rope, and she powered Asuka up. She muscled her up uh, for a suplex back into the ring. It was a little scary, though, because it looked like Asuka might fall right on her head, uh, but thankfully, she, she made it, and she was okay. Bianca hit a running blockbuster, a standing moonsault for a two-count. They were battling on top. Asuka pulled Bianca down by her braid and hit a code breaker for two. Bianca got Asuka up in position for a glam slam or the jaded. If you are uh, an AEW fit. I bet there's a lot of jaded fans after this uh, main event finish tonight. But she drove her forward face first into the top turnbuckle. Bianca tried for the KOD. Asuka got out of it. And Bianca almost hit the referee. Didn't do it, but almost hit the referee. While that, was, uh, that little distraction took place, Asuka tried to use the mist. She was going to spit the mist in Bianca's eyes. Bianca ducked it, though, so she did not get misted. Bianca went for the KOD. Asuka reversed into an armbar. Great reversal. Crowd went nuts here because they thought this was going to be a title change. They wanted to see Asuka win the championship. Bianca, though, maneuvered out of it, and she deadlifted Asuka. Very slowly deadlifted her up into position for the KOD, dropped her down for it, Got the pin, retained the championship. What I liked about this, I will say, she didn't hit two, three, four KODs. She struggled throughout the match a couple of different times to try to get Asuka on her shoulders, and every time Asuka would slip out. So she didn't use multiple finishers here. The story was the struggle to get Asuka in position and hit the move. And when she finally did it, she pinned it. Very simple story. Uh, I still think that Bianca is going to have to go heel soon if they can't line up any good uh heel challengers for her because otherwise you know the crowd is going to end up turning against her you know it's been a year now i already see people making the the super cena jokes about bianca right it's super super bianca um so if they don't have good people for her to work with and really if you look it's slim pickings right now on the raw roster they've got plenty of women on there but nobody's over oscar was over and now Asuka's been beaten. Becky Lynch. We've already, I mean, how many times are we going to do Becky and Bianca? Becky's doing the tag team thing. We've seen Bianca and Bailey. They've already done that. They don't have a lot of good options right now on that Monday Night Raw roster. There aren't a lot of other people who are over at that level who I would plug in there. The name I keep coming back to, and I know people are going to roll their eyes, some people. Uh, but the name I keep coming back to here is Charlotte Flair. Now... I think Charlotte might be going away for a while. I, I saw some rumor that she might take some time off again before she comes back. I don't know how true that is. Uh, but I could see Charlotte 
in the next several months coming over to Monday Night Raw to start a program with Bianca Belair. We've only seen them work a couple of television matches, and that was a couple of years ago. Uh, from what I remember, there was a Raw match uh, for the championship where Charlotte was defending against her. That was very good. Um, if you remember, there was a, a report at the time that Charlotte lobbied to lose. She wanted to lose her title to Bianca, and they told her no. Uh, that was the report anyway. So we really haven't seen the two of them work together very much. Uh, what we saw, though, was very good. Um, but look, you know, Bianca is very quickly turning into Ms. WrestleMania. This was her third WrestleMania match, her third straight WrestleMania win, so she has a win streak going, and also the third WrestleMania match that she has competed for a championship. In this case, she was defending for the first time, uh, but her third straight championship match, and every single one of these matches is either the best or in contention for being one of the best matches on the entire show. The match with Sasha at WrestleMania 37 was excellent. The match with Becky last year was one of the best matches of either night of WrestleMania. And I think you could say the same here for Bianca and Asuka. I don't think it was the best match at WrestleMania this year. It wasn't. But was it one of the best matches? I think you can make that statement, sure. So that's three years in a row of excellent matches. She's putting together quite a, a WrestleMania resume for herself. But again, the problem I'm looking ahead now, WrestleMania is over. She beat Asuka. Congratulations. Now what? Now what? Look at the Raw roster, the women's roster. Even if they start calling people up from NXT, which they absolutely should do. There's plenty of people they could call. They could call up Roxanne Perez. They could call up Zoe Stark. I mean, you can call up anybody you want to. But it's going to take time to start building them up. Who is going to be that next person that you put in there with Bianca? Unless they keep this thing going with Asuka. And she's already beaten her. So I don't even see the need to, to continue on with this. She beat her clean in the middle of the ring. She needs people to work with. Otherwise, people are going to get bored. Some people are already bored. But they're going to get really bored. If she just comes out every week, twirls her braid, and has more matches with Carmella and Nikki Cross. Who gives a shit? Let's get some fresh opponents in there for her. And let's get something going. Because one thing that has been Triple H's Achilles heel on Raw and SmackDown since he's taken over. I actually think the women's stories and the women's divisions on both shows under Triple H over the last six to nine months have regressed. They've actually gotten worse. And I don't quite understand that because Triple H was running NXT back in the black and gold era, even, even a little bit before like black and gold. And he had the best women's division maybe in the entire country. He had a great women's division. In NXT. So we know he's overseen great women's divisions before, but it just doesn't seem like he's paid as much attention to it since taking over on the main roster. I'm sure he's got a lot on his mind, but he cannot continue to neglect good stories, compelling stories in the women's division. Coming out of this weekend, that is going to have to be something that he works on and tries to improve. Now, we went back to the ring. After this, with The Miz and Snoop Dogg, to announce tonight's attendance of 81,395. And they said that the two-night attendance for WrestleMania this year was 161,892. That was the uh, total combined attendance for WrestleMania, or at least that's the number they claimed. Uh, whatever the actual number was, they had fuck ton of people in that crowd it was very impressive the stage set up uh and just looking out into the uh stadium packed to the brim it was very impressive uh they did go very very crazy though with crowd shots here there were a couple times during this pay-per-view where during an important part of the match they just cut to a crowd a wide shot of the crowd I'm like what are you doing it's like they're setting up for a big spot let's go to a wide shot so we have to squint like i like, I don't, was I the only one who noticed this? This happened multiple times here on the show tonight. It was worse tonight than it was the, the night before. But it was very impressive to see all the people they had there. So Miz started complaining to Snoop Dogg about Snoop putting him in a match with Pat McAfee the night before. And Snoop told him, he said, uh, my bad. And Miz didn't want to hear it. He was still very upset. 
And Snoop said, no, 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 I didn't mean my bad. I meant my bad. And he pointed towards the stage. And at that point, we heard Shane McMahon's theme music. Here comes the money. The same Shane McMahon who was fired and sent home by his father after the Royal Rumble last year. Here comes the money. There goes the money. We have not heard from Shane McMahon since. Well, he was back at WrestleMania tonight. We can't find time for Bobby Lashley. We can't find time for LA Knight, but we can find time for Shane McMahon. That's great. I would have much preferred to have LA Knight go out there and have a fucking what and yeah off with Steve Austin, get stunned, drink, have him drink beer, and go to the back. That would have been better than what we got here. But we didn't get that. Look at Richie Rich over here dropping all this money on me. Hey, hey you guys are I just want you to know, going nuts tonight. I think you rock. I don't mean the rock. Brian rock, Becerra. You rock. And I just wanted you to know that. With the $100 Super Chat drop. Bryant, I, I'm pretty sure Bryant entered into that contest. And he, he usually goes crazy in these uh, Wrestle Rumble contests, which we're going to get to a little bit later. So, uh, Brian, thank you very much. Shane McMahon comes out to the ring. I still can't believe that we had Shane McMahon on the show tonight. So Shane gets in. He's in tears. I wasn't sure if maybe he was just exhausted from the uh, trip down to the ring. But he was in tears. He was very emotional. Got on the microphone. He thanked everybody for that reaction. Snoop Dogg told him from one OG to another, he said, will you please take care of this, brother? And so we had a referee to make it official. Right? The best in the world. Shane McMahon. Remember the old, a lot of history between these two, right? Didn't they have a match at WrestleMania one year? I think they did. I'm pretty sure I was there for it. So here we go again, the rematch that absolutely nobody, not one single person in the world asked for, Shane McMahon against The Miz. This did not last very long. And the reason it did not last very long is because Shane did a leapfrog, and upon landing, he was going to do a, leap dro uh, a leapfrog drop-down spot. He did the leapfrog. He went to go do the drop-down, and he dropped down all right. Uh, but not, because, not, not the way that he wanted to. He went down, he immediately clutched his knee like it gave out on him on the landing. And you could tell that it wasn't a work. Some people were like, wait, is this a work? Is this part of the, you know, part of the plan here? It's the amazing You could tell pretty, pretty much right away that it was Jim not a work. Loves based on the way they treated this. All hail Goonthar. Goonthar. The amazing Goonthar. $50 super chat drop from Mr. AJ. I think that was AJ all day. Hey, look at that. There's Pat Sajak applying the crossface chicken wing. Boy, I have to start watching Wheel of Fortune. If that's the kind of action that we're going to get on Wheel of Fortune, I might have to start watching again. Brother, thank you. Thank you, AJ. I appreciate that. So poor Shane McMahon here is clutching his knee. And the reason I could tell that this was not a, a work is because they immediately cut away and they put the camera on the Miz and they would not show Shane. They would not go back to Shane. You, you saw the doctor come into the ring, but they immediately cut away. So they had that tight camera shot on, on The Miz, and who knows what's going through his head now. He's got to be thinking, oh, fuck, what do I do now? So they drag Shane out of the ring, and they had to call an audible, right? It's WrestleMania. You've got 80,000 people here. What are you going to do? Right? Well, don't worry about it, because you got Snoop Dogg in the ring. Snoop Dogg's been around for a while, right? He's, uh, he's in there. He's cool. He's calm. Obviously, the referee fed some sort of instruction to him from the back. He punched the Miz in the face. Then he punched the Miz in the face for a second time. And then he executed what, if anybody else did this, they would be castrated for. He executed probably one of the worst people's elbows. But yet he somehow made it look kind of cool because it's Snoop Dogg and he's doing a people's elbow at WrestleMania. And the fans loved it. Fans popped huge for it. Snoop Dogg covered the Miz. He pinned him. And Snoop Dogg is out there. And Snoop Dogg basically he's out there saying, man, we'll, we'll do it on the fly. We'll call it on the fly. Look at this guy. This guy is a pro. He is a pro. Look, I don't want to see anybody get hurt. Right? I don't take any great pleasure that Shane McMahon got hurt and we didn't get the rest of the match. My thing is this is not a match that we should have 
gotten in the first place. Now, as far as Shane, I have not seen the latest update on Shane. What I did see from the live accounts of people in the stadium at ringside uh, is that he was helped through the crowd to the back. He was not stretchered out. He was basically walking, but with the assistance of people under his arms. So I'm not sure if it was a knee issue. I'm not sure if it was a quad. I'm not sure if he rolled his ankle. Maybe he got a Charlie horse. <laughs> Maybe he got a Charlie horse. Let me tell you something. Those were a bitch, okay? Uh, but no, I don't know what exactly it was. Maybe it was a knee. Maybe it wasn't. Obviously, he was injured enough that he could not continue. And, you know, that, that sucks for him. He had no business being out. I know they were going for the big surprise pop, and he got a, a, a nice reaction from the crowd, and he was all emotional. Shane McMahon had no business being out there. Nick Khan talked all week about how we got some surprises saved up for WrestleMania this year. And those surprises turned out to be Pat McAfee on night one and Shane McMahon on night two. Those are some pretty fucking lame surprises. But this is the one, you know, and, and people like Pat, and Pat can go in there and do the things that he does. Pat McAfee out there right now is like what Shane McMahon used to be when he would go out there. Shane, you know, he was kind of athletic. He was younger. He could do, you know, moves like what Pat McAfee does now and jump off the top rope and all that stuff. Uh, Pat's a lot younger, though, than Shane is. You know, Shane McMahon is not the uh, spring chicken that he used to be. Shane McMahon now is 53 years old, and he doesn't wrestle. He has not done anything physical in the ring in over a year. And he's 53 years old. And he goes out there and he looks blown up within you know two minutes of being out there. He looked blown up three or four years ago. Okay, now it's 2023. Guy does a leapfrog, comes down, blows out his knee. Never should have been out there in the first place doing a match. Nobody asked for this. Nobody asked for a Shane McMahon match with The Miz at WrestleMania. No one. Except maybe Vince McMahon. So this never should have even happened in the first place. Keep him and his phantom punches out of the ring. Please. We had Edge. It's like this family, the, the McMahon. They can't help themselves. We had Edge. One-on-one -on -one with Demon Finn Balor. Hell in a cell. Triple Edge did one thing right. Uh, he got rid of that red abomination. No more red hell in a cell. I'll tell you what I'm more uh, surprised by. I'm more surprised by the fact that there was anybody in that company who looked at that red cell when they painted it red and thought to themselves, wow, this looks a lot better than the original. This looks really good. We should go with this. So we end up with, what, five years of this? Right? Something like that. Maybe more. Five years of the red cell which looked terrible. So they've gone back to that more neutral. It almost looked grayish, um, but it was the more neutral kind of grayish or sil silver uh, color of the uh, cell, which was perfect. I, frankly, I think it looks more ominous that way. I don't know. I mean, the red, the red one never looked... I guess the, the idea of the red one was we're painting it blood red. Yeah, but you don't do blood anymore. <laughs> well, it's funny I say that because we got blood in this match, but... I'm not talking about Hardway Blood. This is not a company that does blood anymore. So it's like, you know what? You don't need to paint it red. It, it hurts the eyes. Just go back to the way it was. It looked far more ominous that way. So I'm very happy that they went back to that. Uh, they tied this in as they lowered the cell and they were getting ready to, you know, get the entrances going here. They tied this match into an ad for the new Exorcist movie that's coming out. So we had Russell Crowe, who I think is the star of the movie, uh, Russell Crowe did a little video intro for the match. Edge made his way out first. And we had Brood Edge. Now, we did not get the Brood entrance. Remember when he did the Brood entrance at SummerSlam a few years ago? It wasn't the old Brood entrance, but it said, like, I think it said Brood Edge, actually. It said the Brood on the Videotron when he came out. Uh, no Gangrel. There were rumors that Gangrel was going to be part of this entrance in some way. Uh, Gangrel was there. Uh, he was in Los Angeles. He was spotted around some of the events, but he did not come out here. Uh, although we did get a Gangrel mention on commentary a little bit later on from uh, Corey Graves. Edge came out to Raining Blood by Slayer. 
not the first time we've had a WWE entrance to a Slayer song. Might be. I can't think of another one. Uh, he was wearing this very cool-looking metallic uh, skull mask. It was like a mirror mask uh, in the form of a skull. Kind of looked like something out of one of the Terminator movies. So I thought that was cool. And uh, then his theme song played. He took the mask off. Finn Balor came out with the demon paint for the first time since his embarrassing loss to Roman Reigns a couple of years ago. Graves said that he looked like a trapped zombie from The Walking Dead. Edge pulled out kendo sticks from underneath the ring, worked over Balor. Then he used two of them to pin Balor against the corner of the cage. I first saw that spot in the cell match between the New Day and the Usos in 2017. And that is still one of the best uh, cell matches that WWE has done in the last decade. And, and the best of any of the tag team Hell in a Cell matches they've ever done. That was an excellent match. But I think that's the first time I saw that where you trap your opponent. I think the Usos trapped Xavier Woods uh, in the corner by sticking the kendo sticks through the, uh, the holes in the cage. So he did that here to Balor and then uh, jumped off the apron, gave him a drop kick. Edge pulled a table out from underneath the ring, which got a bigger reaction than anybody in the women's showcase match. So, uh, yay for the table. He leaned the table up against a corner of the cage. Later on, Balor drop-kicked Edge through that table, so it came back to bite him on the ass. Edge put Balor down with an unprettier. Balor came right back, and Corey Graves... You know, he came right back from a couple of different moves. And on commentary, Corey Graves was saying, well, it's because he's the demon. So, you know, he's, he's recovering quicker from these moves, because now he's, I, you know, he's got paint on his body now. It gives him some uh, mutant healing powers. Well, he could have used those mutant healing powers about two minutes later because Edge pulled a ladder out and he just threw it right at Balor's head. And obviously it connected a little too well. Balor got cut open hard way. He was bleeding all over the mat. So the referee called a temporary stop to the match. He was backing Edge up, put the gloves on, called the doctor into the cell. Uh, they kept the camera off Balor. They would not show him, just like earlier with Shane McMahon. So we had a referee stoppage for blood in a Hell in a Cell match. It's a very different era. John Moxley would be furious. He would never stand for anything like this. Mike Johnson of PW Insider said that they get what we didn't see on camera. He said that at ringside they gave Balor a numbing agent via injection. And they actually gave him staples to the head right there at ringside. That's why it took so long. And it, it killed the vibe of the match because you had to stop the entire thing. And so while that was going on, Edge went around. He pulled out more weapons and more toys to try to kill time. But that's what was going on. You know, they gave Balor an injection. They put staples in his head at ringside. And then he went right back to it. And they continued the match. He hit a coup de grace uh, for a near fall. Balor climbed up a ladder. Edge hit him with a kendo stick. Edge joined Balor on the ladder and hit an impaler DDT. Edge made the cover. Balor kicked out at the very last moment. So Edge went outside. He pulled out another table. Set that up inside the ring. Balor got up and he blasted Edge with four kendo stick shots. Placed him on top of the table. Balor teased that he was going to go up to the top rope. And then he had a change of heart. And instead, he opted to leap onto the side of the cage. And, you know, like about halfway up the cell, uh, it was almost like a little ledge. And so he's standing on the ledge of the cell. And he did the uh, double stomp off the side of the cage. Edge moved, though. So all he did was put his feet through the table. He crashed right through. When Balor got up, Edge speared him and covered him for a near fall. So Edge now is shocked. He can't believe that this guy kicked out. He picks up a kendo stick. He starts beating Balor with it. He traded the kendo stick for a chair. And these chairs, by the way, the chairs were like red. We can't have a red cell, but I guess we could have red chairs. So he's got the chair. He's beating Balor with it. Edge slides a chair under Balor's head. And he goes and grabs another chair. And he delivers the one-man concerto. Pins Finn Balor. Wins the match. 
and all I can say is this. Remember, uh, you can't kill the demon if the demon was already dead. I've been telling you for two years, when he fell off the top rope against Roman Reigns, the demon is dead. Rest in peace. So he lost here. Back-to-back -back losses for the demon in the last couple of years. You can't kill what's already dead. Uh, fair play to Balor, though. Look, he continued the match, even with Staples being put in his head. So, uh, you know, fair play to him for doing that and continuing the match. This was not as good as the cell match with Edge and Seth Rollins in Saudi Arabia a couple of years ago, but, you know, it was a spectacle. That's what this was. This, this was a spectacle here. You know, Edge has been very vocal recently. I feel like he's been doing a lot more interviews talking about the possibility of um, retiring soon. I mean, he's talked about this before, but I feel like he's been really ratcheting up the... Uh, conversation about this and he's been very vocal about how i want to retire in toronto it's more important to him that he retire in toronto even if it's not at a wrestlemania like it would be more important to him to retire in toronto than it would be at a wrestlemania that's really what he wants to do and every wrestlemania match therefore could potentially be his last this could have been edge's last match at wrestlemania i don't think it will be i think he's got at least one more to go but you look at this, and every every time he steps in there at a WrestleMania, it could be his last time. All of that being said, this was the wrong outcome. Triple H made the wrong choice. The wrong person won this match. This should have been a Finn Balor win, a win for the Judgment Day. Uh, again, I guess they were just going for the happy ending here, where Edge can finally put the Judgment Day in the rear view. I don't think Edge gets anything out of this win. I thought it was completely unnecessary, and it was the wrong choice. The wrong man went over. So they recap the WWE Hall of Fame ceremony. They had highlights from the event on Friday night, which I reviewed today earlier on episode 802 of the podcast. Uh, yes, there was, a po there was a full podcast today. I know in, in the middle of all this WrestleMania madness and all the live streaming, there wasn't fact a full two hour plus podcast so if you missed it now you got something to listen to tomorrow episode 802 so make sure you With listen in my eye. shout out to bender bender mcsimpson with the 1992 rick flair tear in his eye super chat thank you bender after all the streaming and all the work i've done this weekend i think i may go on a bender this week it might not be a bad idea so then they had all the Hall of Famers come out on stage. They do this every year uh, at WrestleMania. So this time, it so he came out to South of Heaven. I thought that Edge came out to Raining Blood. Did I get the Slayer song wrong? <laughs> I thought it was Raining Blood. Okay, maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I was more focused on the mask than I was the music. I'm being told that it was a different Slayer song. But at least I got the band right. So don't don't uh, don't go too hard on me. Anyway, I stand corrected. If I if I am wrong, oh boy, <laughs> Bree mode. Uh, if I'm wrong, I apologize. Apparently, it was a different song. But Rey Mysterio was out there. Stacy Keebler was out there looking fantastic. I mean, Stacy's always been a uh, beautiful, beautiful woman. Uh, the great Muda was out there. They had the families of uh, Andy Kaufman and Tim White. Both of Tim's brothers were out there with the Warrior Award trophy. Uh, poor Muda. He spit the green mist too early because they were going member by member and announcing their names and then getting a close-up shot. And you could see before they got to Muda, he did the mist. Then they zoomed in on him. And all you saw was just green goo dripping down his chin. So he was a little, you know, there was a little uh, premature misting uh, going on here with the gray mood. I mean, look, it happens, right? The guy is 60-something years old. I mean, cut him some slack. So then they aired a video package for next year's WrestleMania in Philadelphia. Then they showed Seth Rollins' full entrance. Now, maybe it was different for you, depending on how you were watching this show. I have the full Peacock. I guess I'm on the non-ad version of Peacock. I don't know. I got some version of Peacock. I don't know. Peacock is Peacock. But on my version, they showed the entire Seth Rollins' entrance from the night before. They just replayed the entire thing <laughs> from start to finish. 
And I'm sitting here, and I, at first I thought this pay-per-view was going to go off a lot earlier than it did. I said, okay, this is good. I thought this was going to be good. Hey, look at this. Damn it, Dan. Oh, my God. MJF is not the only one to be rebar misfit, my friends. Damn it, Dan. Dropped a hundred and fifty dollar super chat here on the stream. Holy shit. That is the Solo Monster Rebar Mitzvah Super Chat. I was not expecting that tonight. Holy crap. Now it's a party. Now it's a party. Anyway. Uh so they showed the entire Rollins entrance, then they went from that to a TurboTax commercial. I'm like, what is going on here? It's like it felt like they were stalling for time. Now, I maybe they were cleaning up. That's the only thing I could think. They were lifting the cell and then cleaning up all the debris. They had to change out the mat because the mat had Balor's blood all over it. And for the main event, the mat was completely clean. I don't know how long that takes to swap out the mat. Uh, they're pretty efficient about these things. But I assume that's the reason why they were stalling. But now it just felt like they're just dragging the show out, right? We didn't have any of that on night one. You know, we, I mean, they, they had their sponsors and some ads, but here it just felt like they were kind of stalling for time. But finally, the time for stalling was over. It was the main event of WrestleMania. For the undisputed WWE Universal Championship, Roman Reigns, well over 900 days as the champion, defending his title against the American Nightmare, Cody Rhodes. Brandy Rhodes was in the front row behind the announcers with their daughter, Liberty. I think her, na her name is Liberty, I think, right? So Cody goes over, kisses his wife, grabs his beautiful baby girl, and is holding her. She had the headphones over her ears to protect from all the noise in the stadium. Her little headphones on. Either that or it was protecting her from Michael Cole's commentary. One or the other. Then Cody took off his weight belt. And he handed it over to a, a child in the front row who I did not recognize right away because he did not have his mask on. So I didn't, I didn't recognize it instantly. Uh, but then Michael Cole acknowledged that it was the son of the late John Huber. It was Brody Lee Jr. in the front row, and Cody handed his weight belt to Brody. So we had negative one. It was at WrestleMania. He made an appearance in the main event of WrestleMania. Don't tell Cornette. Don't tell Cornette that we had a negative one appearance here at WrestleMania. I'm sure he'll be very upset. The Forbidden Door was open here at WrestleMania. Who knew? I will say this. As soon as I saw Brandy, I started thinking, wait a minute. Maybe we're going to get a spot here in this match with her and Paul Heyman. It never happened. But the thought did occur to me that we might be getting that. Roman Reigns had six piano players playing uh, him down to the... well. They played first, then they played his music. But they had the six pianists on stage playing, then they played his theme, out comes Roman, he's got the wise man, he's got Solo Sokoa with him. The first man to defend the same championship, we were told, three straight times at WrestleMania. So his entrance took a while, you know, for a Roman Reigns entrance, it used to be The Undertaker, and the time that it would take for him to come to the ring, you could go fix a sandwich, you can go, you know, take a piss if you have to go to the bathroom. You could do your taxes. You could read the paper, come back, and then Undertaker would first be raising the lights. Now it's like Roman Reigns has now, he has now taken the mantle from the Undertaker. It takes a while for Roman Reigns to come down to the ring and put his finger up in the air. So uh, I was able to catch up on some of my notes. I had fallen behind, so it was good. I, I appreciated the entrance. Cody was getting some noticeable boos. Uh, it was definitely now universal cheers for him when he came out. But for the most part, it was a positive reaction. Really, honestly, it was mixed for both guys. Uh, both guys got cheers. Both guys got boos. The bell rang. We got the big cheer from the crowd. There was a certain electricity in the air for this match. This match did feel like a big WrestleMania main event. And I didn't know if it would. You know, even I wondered. After he won the Royal Rumble, is, is Cody going to feel like he belongs in that main event? Is he going to be treated like he belongs in the WrestleMania main event? After seeing him tonight, the answer is yes. This felt like a big deal, this match. 
Uh, and it was a fresh match because we have not seen this version of Cody Rhodes against this version of Roman Reigns in a singles match. The last time we saw these two men in the ring together was probably the tag team title match at Battleground back in 2013, I think it was, with the Rhodes brothers against the Shield, which was fantastic. But that's how far back you would have to go. These are two very different performers now than they were a decade ago. A lot has changed in the last 10 years. So it was a first time ever fresh match here in the main event of WrestleMania. Cody did the Dustin drop down punch spot. Roman immediately then bailed to the floor. Paul Heyman came over to give him a pep talk. Paul is great. I mean, I, I don't really have to say it. I think you guys know that. But you watch Paul Heyman when he is out there. And he's actually managing during a match. He's not just the spokesperson, but he was actually, he was managing in this match. And at first he goes over to Roman and he's like, you know, he's all timid. He's like, oh, my tribal chief, can I, can I give you some advice? And then he's like, you got to go in there and destroy him, right? And then immediately he goes, if that's okay with you, my tribal chief, I love you, my tribal chief. <laughs> he goes in and out. Like he's, he's fucking great. Heyman, Heyman is perfect in this role. When Roman eventually does lose the championship in uh, 2028, uh, I hope that they keep he and Heyman together. I hope they don't split them up. So Cody tried for a disaster kick off the ropes. Roman caught him, powerbombed him. And Roman at that point went on offense for a while. Body slammed Cody on the ramp. Cody came right back, though. He body slammed Roman on the ramp. He got Roman back in the ring, climbed up on the apron. Referee was distracted, though with Roman Reigns in the ring, and Solo Sokoa pulled a chair out from under the ring, hit Cody in the ribs with it. This is also one of my issues with what they did here in the finish. I didn't have an issue with the interference throughout the match. I really did. Because I had just assumed what the outcome was going to be. So people in the chat here, even before I went live, were like, well, this is an overbooked mess. This is like a a Jeff Jarrett TNA main event. And I disagreed. I didn't mind Solo interfering here, interfering again a little bit later, the Usos coming out. Yeah, was it overbooked? Yeah, it was. But I thought that we were building to something that never came. That's what made it so much worse. If you are having constant interference in the main event, this is the main event of WrestleMania. This is the biggest match that you're going to do all year long. And if you have constant interference in this main event, if you are building to a crescendo here, where in the end, you're going to give people the payoff that they're hoping for and the payoff that they're expecting, then that's fine because you're building to something. Especially when Owens and Sammy came out later to fend off the bad guys, right? It's like, okay, now we've even the odds. And it just felt to me, it just felt like, okay, this is going to be a Cody win here at the end of this match. So, I can excuse all the other interference because it plays into all the things that he has to overcome in this match. And then when we saw them just do more interference and it played directly into the finish, it fucking sucked. And that's one of the, one of the reasons why I didn't like the finish. The way they booked this, given the finish, was terrible. With a different outcome, it wouldn't have been so terrible. But as I sit here now looking at all this... That's a big part of what made that finish feel so flat and feel so fucking dumb. But anyway, this is the first time that Solo got involved here in this match. Referee did not see it. Hit him in the ribs with a chair. Solo got involved again a short time later. Grabbed Cody's leg coming off the ropes. That allowed Roman to turn Cody inside out with a clothesline when he turned around. Then he set him up on the Spanish announce desk outside. And Roman climbed up on top of the table with him. And before he could do whatever it was that he was going to, he was going to give him a power bomb, I think. Cody reversed out of it and he backdropped Roman through the English announce desk. Michael Cole is flipping out, right? Cody, this is it. You got to take advantage. This is your moment, right? I thought Michael Cole did a, a very good job here in this match. Back inside the ring, Cody got a scoop slam and SoFi Stadium started to rumble a little bit. They were feeling it. You know, they were, they were, they were getting into this here. He got the Cody cutter. Roman sold it great. Roman got a shoulder up at two and three quarters. So the champion rolled outside. Cody hit a suicide dive, then got him back in the ring. Solo whipped Cody with his weight belt. And when you whip somebody with your belt, 
and makes a sound. And the referee, Dan Engler, heard that sound, and he turned around, and he saw Solo Sokoa, and he ejected Solo Sokoa from the match. And I thought, look at that. A rare sighting, as rare as Bigfoot or Loch Ness Monster. A competent referee in wrestling. We don't have nearly enough of them, especially in AEW. The referees are always made to look like a bunch of fucking morons. So it was nice to have a competent referee here for a change. So he ejected Solo. And so now Roman Reigns no longer has the, his enforcer here to help him out. There's no more Solo Sokoa. Cody Rhodes hit the crossroads. You had to know this was not going to be worth You're not going to beat Roman Reigns with one crossroads. Right, so, of course, Roman kicked out. Roman came back with a huge rock bottom, or that's what Michael Cole called it. He called it a rock bottom. Honestly, it was a bookend, is what it was. Hit him with the bookend. And now, here comes the Superman punch a little bit later on. Cody, though, sidesteps it, and he hits a pedigree. Goes for the pin. Roman Reigns kicks out. For the second time this weekend, somebody used the pedigree and it got kicked out of. It was in the Rollins and Logan Paul match, and then it was here in the Cody and Roman match. They did a spot where Cody came off the ropes for a disaster kick, and as he came off, Roman caught him with a Superman punch. Uh, Roman, after the near fall there, he couldn't beat him with it. Roman's in the corner. He's got his head in his hands. He's shaking his head. He can't believe this. He doesn't know what he needs to do to beat this man. Right? He can't put down Cody Rhodes. He's selling this great... The frustration, the aggravation, he doesn't know what to do. And the crowd is feeding off of this, right? They were into it. They were behind Cody. They so badly wanted to see Roman drop these ties. Maybe even more so than seeing Cody win. They just wanted to see Roman lose. They were ready to see him finally drop these championships. And Roman just couldn't figure this guy out. So we had this is awesome chance from the crowd. Paul Heyman was screaming at Roman that Cody was ready to be beaten. He's ready. He's ready to be beaten. Roman charges in for the spear. Cody dove over him, rolled him up for a two count. Then he got Roman in the figure four leg lock. Roman was able to reverse the hold until Cody got to the ropes. Cody went to the top rope. He was going to do something, but Roman came charging in. So Cody dove over him, hit the ropes, came off, and Roman caught him with the spear. And, of course, Cody kicked out. Roman mounted him. Now he was pissed. So he mounted Cody, starts delivering some very angry shots. He gave the signal for the finish, right? This is it. This is going to be the end here. He applied the guillotine, which is a move that he has won many matches with. We actually haven't seen him win uh, very many matches recently with that move. I'm almost positive he beat Drew McIntyre with it the first time they met at that one Survivor Series. He beat Bill Goldberg with it which I think ended up being Goldberg's final match in WWE. Uh, but that's the move he used to beat Bill Goldberg as well. So we haven't seen him use that in a while. Referee lifted Cody's arm. Cody held the arm up, right? There's still life left in him. But then Roman wrapped the legs around the body, and he took Cody down to the mat. And things looked bleak for Cody Rhodes here. But he managed to break the hold. Now Cody is on top of Roman. And he is raining right hands down upon him. They both got up. Cody went for a pump kick. Roman moved. And Cody kicks the referee. Down goes Dan Engler. Roman catches Cody with a Superman punch. That knocks Cody backwards into the ropes. He comes off the ropes. We get a double clothesline. And we get a double down. Both men are laid out. So there's your ref bump. So you knew some fuckery was coming here in this main event. Cody made it back to his feet first. And he set up for the crossroads when who should show up but the former tag team champions, Jimmy and Jey Uso. And they deliver a super kick to Cody. Then they hit the 1D. Here come Kevin Owens and Sami Zayn. Out of the crowd, right? Big reaction from the crowd. They hit the ring. They cleared the Usos. Owens hits Roman with the stunner. They get Roman in the corner. Sami Zayn hits the other corner, and he connects with the Haluva kick. So down goes Roman. Owens and Zayn brawl with the Usos into the crowd. So now the Usos are gone. Solo Sokoa is gone. Reigns has eaten a stunner. 
Reigns has eaten a halluva kick. The crowd, everybody, is on their feet because they can feel it. They can taste it. It's going to happen, finally. In the ring, Cody crawls over slowly, makes the cover. The referee is back now. He's semi-conscious. He crawls over. He makes the slow count. We have one. We have two. We have three. No, we don't. Roman gets a shoulder up. Great near fall. So we have champion and challenger. They're both on their knees. They're exchanging shots. Back on their feet now. More shots. Roman went for a Superman punch. Cody caught him with a jab. And then he did the old uh, Dusty Rhodes flip-flop and fly. Then he hits a crossroads. Holds on to Roman. Gets back to his feet. Hits a second crossroads. Paul Heyman now gets up on the apron to distract the referee. And that gave Solo Sokoa, disguised in a hoodie, made his way back out, and he reaches over the top rope and he delivers the Samoan spike to Cody Rhodes. Roman Reigns gets up, he spears Cody, and he pins Cody Rhodes with the help of Solo Sokoa. To retain his undisputed championship, he will... In, I mean, it's just a given that he's going to hit 1,000 days. He ain't losing that championship now before the end of May. So he's going to get to 1,000 days. He's going to go to Money in the Bank. He's going to go to SummerSlam, maybe even beyond SummerSlam. Because now that he got past WrestleMania, like once he gets past 1,000 days, he could lose the title whenever. You know, he may lose the title at WrestleMania 40. We don't know. We don't know. What we do know, though, is that he is going to go into Monday Night Raw tomorrow night, still as the champion. And Cody Rhodes goes down a loser here at this WrestleMania. This was a complete dog shit ending to this match, which is a, a huge shame because this was a tremendous main event. This was a great, fun, electric WrestleMania main event. And up until that point, I just... Despite all the overbooking, I didn't mind it. It didn't bother me. Because I thought the story was building to a certain point. When I turned the page to read the next chapter of the story, the next page of the story, I felt like maybe I had skipped a few pages. I go, Where, where's the ending? here? I go, what is this? This is not the ending I was hoping for. I, I thought something like this might happen, but I was hoping Triple H would have enough sense. Uh, certainly not to do it the way that he did. And... One of my biggest gripes is the booking of the main event overall. If they knew this was going to be the finish, I mean, how do you how do you have constant interference in this match and have people thrown out and ejected and you you know you play with people like that and then you just send the same guy back out there to interfere for a third time and that's what it takes to have Roman Reigns pin Cody Rhodes. I mean, it's just not a good finish. People will say it gets good heat. Yeah, you're going to have a lot of people very pissed off and upset about that finish. And yes, they're going to watch the television show this week. Guess what? They would have watched the television show this week regardless. Looking at that finish, I cannot sit here and objectively tell you that it was a good way to go off the air for WrestleMania. It wasn't. I thought it was shit. But I, I love the rest of the match. Up to that point, I thought these two were having a tremendous match. And I will not put down the match just because of the finish. But again, I think it's a huge missed opportunity. The fans were ready for it. It's been long enough. Again, with Drew, absolutely not the right time. With Sammy, didn't feel like it was the right guy at the right time, even though it would have been very easy to give the people in the building that night in Canada what they wanted. There, there are moments where even I would agree, keep the titles on Roman. But this is the first time where it really did feel different to me. And it felt like this is it. You know, they they have something in Cody that I'm not sure when they first brought him back, if they expected him to be uh, accepted at the level that he's been accepted at. I hope for their sake and I hope for Cody's sake that coming out of this now, you know, he maintains that popularity. And it's not a case where people are just so deflated, you know, and they've just taken the piss out of this guy so much that he's now less over because of it. And even if they do a rematch, you know, down the road, you know, is he going to be as over as he was the first time? I mean, if they tell the story right, he could be. I don't think he's dead in the water, but I'm not even convinced anymore that he's the guy. Tonight should have been the night. If not Cody, then who? 
Again, Jey Uso. I cannot see Jey Uso being the one who takes the championships from him. And then Jey Uso goes on to have this big championship run. There, there's definitely an ending to the story there involving Jey Uso, but I don't think it has to be him being the one to uh, necessarily take those titles from, from Roman Reigns. So when I look back on this night of WrestleMania, a lot of really good matches. The main event, up until the shitty finish, uh, was excellent. The women's match was very good. The Intercontinental title match was phenomenal. A lot of good stuff on this show, but night one wins out. Definitely not as good as night one. And uh, where they go from here, I guess we'll have to wait and see. But the Bloodline story continues. They lost their tag team titles, but they still have the, I guess the only titles that really matter are still uh, in the Bloodline's camp. Yeah, they're very fortunate that they've done a very good job of telling this story. Now they have to be careful that they don't prolong this story for too long, like WCW did with the NWO. And water it down or... You know, just kind of get to a point where people get tired of it and you feel like, well, maybe we, we took this a little, a little too far. Because it's been a great story up until this point, but you do get to that point where fatigue begins to set in. Uh, and now Roman has beaten so many people. He's beaten Owens, he's beaten Drew, he's beaten Sammy, he's beaten Cody, he's beaten Cesaro. Uh, he, he never faced Lashley. Uh, and I guess, again, technically he never beat Rollins, but uh, he's beaten Brock. He's beaten Logan Paul. I mean, all the, bo the, 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 the bodies that have been littered all over the graveyard here. At what point do you pull the trigger and make that call that it's time? You know, it's time to elevate that next person. I felt like tonight was that night. But I can't hate on this WrestleMania. This was overall an excellent WrestleMania. And I hope that uh, people who were upset about that finish... In all fairness, I wasn't either, but I hope they don't let that cloud their judgment. I thought this was an excellent WrestleMania this year. Uh, this poll, I'm about to show you the results of the Twitter poll for tonight. Last night, 92% gave WrestleMania night one a thumbs up. And that poll is still open, by the way. Okay, so 92% thumbs up. I think it was like 2% thumbs down. I suspect this poll is going to look very different. Let's see. Wow. You know, I what? Wow. I was not expecting it to be that bad. Holy shit. Wow. I mean, you talk about a difference night and day. 41% thumbs up, 28% thumbs in the middle, 31% thumbs down. That is a stark contrast to the poll from last. I wish I still had the, uh, the link to the other poll. Wow. And again, I, I knew it would be worse, but I, I honestly didn't think it would be that bad. And that's with 4,000 votes in. People are angry. <laughs> you could tell uh, when people are very upset. And uh, I get the impression that there are a lot of people who are very, very upset about this finish here. So it's a shame. It really is a shame because, again, they they it's like you come to a fork in the road. Do you go right or do you go left? And I think they should have gone right. And Triple H said, no, nah, I think we're going to go this way. I hope he made the right call. But uh, for tonight, it made for a very underwhelming, very, uh, very disappointing finish. And not just because I, I like wanted Cody to win. I just think it was a genuinely stupid finish. Like, really, really dumb the way they did that finish tonight. So. People will be debating it all week. Um, before we get to your uh, super chats and we will and I know you guys have a lot to say about this show uh, so again I will get to them I want to hear from you uh, we do have to uh, get this contest done here because there are people who are waiting to see if they are going to be the recipients of some pretty cool championship belts here so if you're a fan of the old winged eagle old tag team belts old intercontinental uh, championship belts this could be your night. I'm going to bring up the list right now. And uh, the way that we do this, for those who don't know, here on these streams, I have a list here with 4,000 names. And I'm going to paste them into this list randomizer. And so here it is. I'm scrolling. You might see multiple names. People can enter uh, multiple times. 
And so the way it's going to work is we are going to uh, pick three winners. And the third place winner will be number three on the list. The second place winner will be number two on the list. And the first place winner, <laughs> there's Brandy. Uh, the first place winner is going to be getting a pair of classic uh, WWF tag team title belts. I believe the second place is the dual plated winged eagle. I hope I'm getting this right. And uh, third place is intercontinental. So here we go. Number one, number two, and number three on the list. That's how we're going to do it. Let's get a drum roll, please. And let's go and pick the winners of the Wrestle Rumble contest. Shake it all up, and we end up with Brian. Uh, we've got Brian. Car is it Caravlan? Jacob Schwal and Keith Doherty. With almost 4,100 entries in this contest. We got Brian, Jacob, and Keith are the top three winners. So Keith, you are our third place winner. Jacob is the second place winner. And Brian, you are the, you are the grand poobah. You are the first place number one winner. Congrats to all three of you. Thank you to everybody who entered the contest. Wrestle Rumble salutes you. And uh, my thanks to Wrestle Rumble for allowing me to Pick some winners here. Uh, we love giving away championship belts. Always a lot of fun to give some cool shit away. I got, I got a couple of belts behind me up on the wall here, in fact. And uh, these are very cool. I'm sure the ones you are going to be getting are uh, very cool as well. But we got some uh, business to do here. As you guys have been sending in Super Chats all night long. I want to make sure I get to them. I've got to scroll all the way back here. <laughs> we got to go all the way back. So let's make sure we start from the very beginning. Uh, we are going back. How many hours are we going? Oh my God. <laughs> I'm never going to sleep. I'm never going to sleep tonight, am I? There we go. We're going back nine hours. All right, we'll, we'll, we'll get through this. It's all good. We still got to do Be the Booker later. Oh boy. Oh boy. Uh, but before I get into this, let me just uh, also say, I want to just thank uh, everybody who has uh, hung out with me these last two nights. The biggest weekend, typically every year it's the biggest weekend for the channel. Uh, but this has been the biggest weekend yet for the channel. That does not happen without your support, so I thank you. Uh, hey, Zero Game, thank you for the sub. Brumaki in Productions. Says, uh, has a little suggestion for Be the Booker. Oh, I think that's a great match. I think that's fantastic. That's the definite bell. Uh, Moist Kite, thank you very much. Lakers Pats won. We are getting a WWE UFC title unification at WrestleMania 40. Could happen. I'm waiting to see if the official announcement comes tomorrow. And uh, if it does, again, I will likely be doing a, uh, a video. I want to wait to see if we have more details that come out, but uh, keep an eye out. I may do a video tomorrow at some point about this whole WWE sale situation. Uh, Groovy Goose, Top Dollar should join the job squad because he can't uh, get over the top rope. Here's to a fun stream. Dr. Dakota Scorpio says to all the Omas fans in the chat, I have some words of encouragement for you all. Don't stop believing. <laughs> Thanks, Brock. He is an underrated seller. King Bling Blah, better overall bunch of movie skits. WrestleMania 21 or WrestleMania 39? Uh, WrestleMania 21 blow, blows him out of the water. The only one I really liked was the Bloodline uh, Goodfellas skit. That was it. The other ones were very, very average at best. The WrestleMania 21 ones were so much better. There he is. There's the loser himself, Cody Rhodes. Harold, thank you for the sub. Harold the Emperor. Naughty delicious chicken with flavor. <laughs> oh my god. Bree mode has been activated by Retro Mint Man. It says Eddie Guerrero stole my super chat. 
It says, uh, we need another Bianca Belair against Charlotte Flair match. Does WWE have the balls to book it? I don't think they're going to have a choice. I think Bianca is running out of people to work with. Uh, Kyle Ceredonio, is Asuka in the conversation for greatest women's wrestler ever, in your opinion? She absolutely is for me. Uh, well, look at that. Look who just popped up on screen. Like clockwork. Asuka seems to think so. She's giving you the double thumbs up here. Asuka is fantastic. Is she in the conversation? Uh, yeah, you can say she's in the conversation. I don't know if she is the best, but yeah, she's in the conversation. Hey, Ricky Cornflakes, welcome to the channel. Hey, all you new subs, by the way, make sure you put the notification bell on. So when new content goes up or I go live, it'll let you know. Because uh, I know sometimes people don't get notifications. Sometimes it's not on. Are we really doing this for a second time tonight? Oh my God. We're having a party here on the street. Where's Barry Horowitz at? Where is he? Where's Barry Horowitz at? Barry Horowitz is in bed. It is past his bedtime. King Bling Blonde, night one, sell out 80,000. Night two, 81,000. Laughing my ass off, explain. I told you last night. It is the entertainment number that they announce. So yes, I know it makes no sense that you have a sellout at 80,000 and the next night you have 81,000. But that's just, that's the WWE way, right? They have to top themselves. Uh, Naughty Delicious, The Miz finally got his revenge on Shane McMahon with unfortunate bad luck. King Bling Blah Shane jumps off Hell in a Cell, not hurt. Leaping, hurt. Yeah, but when he jumped off Hell in a Cell, I mean, he was, how, how many years ago was that? When he jumped off the Hell in a Cell, that was at WrestleMania 32. You know, I mean, it, it's been like seven or eight years for crying out loud. Unless there was another Hell in a Cell. Maybe there was another Hell in a Cell with uh, Owens. Yeah, I guess that did come later on. But even the one with Owens, though, that had to be, what, 2018? That's still five years ago. Uh, Winter's Paw. I know you're not supposed to laugh at other people's pain, but that Shane spot was the hardest laugh. I've laughed in a long time. That's what he gets. Stay home. Please. Kevin Nash is still taking abuse about his quad and all the quad jokes to this very day, and that happened over 20 years ago. Shane, Shane's not going to be able to live this down. It says Bianca retains, and Snoop Dogg got a WrestleMania victory. Cody's power knows no bounds champion dr king and the other civil leaders civil rights leaders would be truly proud of uh darth panic says call the police yeah titus o'neill during the intercontinental title match was going on about calling the the police i'm still wondering why he was on commentary for that match uh king bling blah who else would you like to see edge face before retiring Theory, Logan Paul, Cody, Cena, Gargano, who else? Anyone from NXT, Carmelo Hayes. Um, I don't really have any interest in seeing him against Cena. I think I think Cena is washed, honestly. Just watching his last few matches, I just think he's you know, he he's washed. I don't think you're gonna get much of a match out of him at this point. Um, I mean of the people you mentioned on the list, I think I actually think Edge and Logan Paul would be able to have an excellent match. Um Edge and Cody. Edge and Gargano. Gargano needs a really good story on the main roster. If Edge really wanted to, you know, kind of uh, help a brother out here, he would tell Triple H, look, I want to work with Johnny Gargano. Maybe Johnny Gargano can actually have a, a legitimate story to sink his teeth into on the main roster. Uh, Left Terrace, thank you for the sub. Winter's Paw, Finn in Trunks makes my eyeballs very happy. Well, uh, I am very happy for you. Crash, why stop now? We are almost at a thousand days. Let's go. Yeah, but who cares? If that's the only reason you wanted to extend his reign, that's a pretty stupid reason. The Undertaker 2024. Knowledge. Knowledge, you are tribal. He means acknowledge. You are tribal chief. Uh, Winston Smith, nice ruby red slippers, Roman. Hey, look, it's Perk Angle. 
Anthony Wolf, I prefer night one over night two. Yes, so do I. Jacob Harrison, two biggest takeaways from tonight is Edge wins, LOL, and Roman wins, LOL. Sheriff, Sasha welcomes you to the channel. Uh, King Taco, the intercontinental triple threat was firing on all cylinders. No offense to Plaxico Burris. Uh, Carl the Crab, Roman is breaking Bruno's record. The only person I see that may beat Roman is either Jay or somebody currently in NXT. He is not being beaten by anybody in NXT. That I can tell you. Oh, you know, I, I see BlissFan is in the chat. Now, BlissFan... BlissFan is, uh, is probably in shambles right now because... BlissFan, I know you were convinced that we were going to get a Bray and or Alexa appearance on the show this weekend. And uh, people tried to tell you that they were not going to be there. And they were not. So, I'm sure you are very uh, disappointed right now. By the way, if this uh, WWE UFC thing is true, Ariel Helwani in shambles right now. Nash DTV so mad, Triple H can't finish a story to save his life. Cody should have won this is bullshit. Sam Dankman Weed, Solomonster, tell the chat that Cody is not buried, nor is he lugered. Same fans that will complain about Roman winning will complain if Cody had won. Uh, well, I already said he's not Luger. So, I said that right from the get-go. HBKC83, I'm not the type to get emotionally invested in pro wrestling, but that outcome of the main event broke my heart. Uh, Donny Yasu with the $20 super chat. I've never seen something go from five star to complete crap so quick. I was watching with friends who were trying to get back into it since the Royal Rumble, and they all turned it off as of now. Yeah, I'll bet there are a lot of people who are very turned off by that. And not even, again, just the fact that Cody lost, but how they did it. It was just cheap. And I just feel like that's not how a WrestleMania main event should go off the air. It just doesn't, it doesn't feel right. Uh, Govin Production. Welcome. Draven Lord. I'm putting night one over night two because there was no feel-good moments tonight. Sheamus didn't win. Asuka didn't win. Cody didn't win. Edge won, but we already knew that would happen. Bernard Frederick. I had a gut feeling after the first two title matches where uh, there were zero title changes that Roman was going to retain. Best match of the night. Uh, Azen with the $13 super chat. I'm not mad, and honestly, I kind of saw this coming when the Endeavor news dropped because I see them matching Roman out to the media. But from a story perspective and what's better for the show, this was inexcusable. Well, let me tell you something. They better have a better reason for keeping the titles on Roman than, uh, oh, we're, we're going to have Roman going after to do media after we make our big announcement and we want him to have a... Uh, a belt over his shoulder. There better be a better explanation than that. Uh, Josh Carlos, 98, felt like the main event was overbooked at the end. Just let the two guys settle it once and for all. Did not see this nonsense in the tag team title. Uh, Maruthi Ram, tonight's event is the newer version of the Montreal Screwjob. I feel like you would only, people would only say that if you didn't live through and fully understand the Montreal Screwjob. Uh, pro Wrestling Fan 486, I can't believe Cody didn't win. Doesn't make sense. What's next for Roman? And do you think they should split the world titles by the summer? I do. EJ Slamp, I was in a good mood because I had a great date with an amazing girl who I'm about to ask to be my girlfriend, but that ending ruined a great weekend. Well, you should tell her to piss off. It's all her fault. Bad mojo. Uh, Luther Angel, decent show. Intercontinental triple threat was the best match of both nights. What do you think is more likely? Uh, Cody returning to AEW or Moxley returning to WWE? 
Uh, I don't see either one of those things happening, but of the two, I would say Cody going back to AEW at some point. I, I don't I don't think Moxley wants to go back. I really don't. I think Moxley, that's why he signed a five-year contract. I think Moxley is very content to stay right where he is. Uh, Scotty Clash, who's going to beat Roman now? Cody winning later seems pointless. Are we seriously going to see Roman another whole year as champion? Vince is back. Dick the Cock Johnson, my good buddy here. Need Tony Khan to tweet the finger in the air emoji after that. <laughs> oh my God, that would be unbelievable. That would be amazing. If Tony, oh my God, if Tony Khan put that, all he had to do was just tweet that one emoji and not say anything, he would get like, he would get 500,000 retweets. <laughs> that would be so petty, but so fucking awesome if he did that. Oh my God. Uh, Eric. Yo, for a minute there, I thought maybe MJF would run out just to fuck Cody over again. Uh, Eric says, Braun Breaker will beat Roman calling in. Now, that would be awful. Braun, Braun is ready to get the call up, but by no means should he, he be the one to beat Roman Reigns. Absolutely not. Uh, Boomerang. The fact that LA Knight was left off WrestleMania on both nights. And we got Shane McMahon makes me sick. Uh, Azen, I just think what annoys me, we're now start staring at two years of Raw without a weekly top champion, and it's been going on even longer for SmackDown. Or Wizzle, do you think this is the best WrestleMania from 30 to 39? I see match was the match of the night for me. How about you? Yeah, I mean, it was, it, it, I think it might have been the best match of the weekend, honestly. Um, as far as best WrestleMania from 30 to 39, uh, I don't know if I'm ready to put it above 30. Uh, from from an in-ring, there were there were more matches because it's two nights. It's it's a little hard to compare because you have two nights, you have more matches. Um, and I was at 30, so you know it's a little bit different. I wasn't at the show this year. It's hard for me to to grade because I was at that one, I wasn't at this one. Um, and I also look at the way that this one ended on night two as compared to the, the great ending we got at 30, and there's no comparison. I mean, that was so much better than what we got tonight. So I don't know. It's tough. I might put it right behind 30, but it's definitely the best mania uh, since those uh, those two, 30 and 31. Uh, put in 64. Here's a few bucks. Please tell me this will all work in the way with a satisfying conclusion feel so damn confused and irritated right now you know look i wish i could tell you that I, I think it was a dumb thing that they did tonight uh so i can't sit here and tell you that they're gonna do the right thing i i don't know uh this has been a great story so far i would like to think that triple h will do the right thing in the end but i don't think he did the right thing tonight uh simi valley with the 100 dollar super chat Simi dropped a hundy bomb on me. I didn't even know it. He says, I don't like the ending, but I get it. They want a thousand days. Cody will go through the entire bloodline. They will run it back at SummerSlam or WrestleMania next year. Ugh. And Cody will get the win. It's called long-term storytelling. Still believe that Cody is the guy. Uh, Dr. Dakota Scorpio, the reviews in the chat helps me get through the day most times when I'm feeling like crap mentally. Going to take a break from anything wrestling. Just wanted to let you know I appreciate you all. Well, Dr. Dakota, we love you. Hopefully you'll stick around here on the streams at least. You know I got you covered on the wrestling end, but we love you, brother. Uh, a Gorilla, overall night two was meh to bleh. God damn, that triple threat was awesome. Winter's Paw, it's amazing how one match ruins an entire weekend. Yeah, I mean, that's the story of the Twitter poll. I was shocked it was that low, but that that's a lot of anger <laughs> towards that finish. If that finish goes a different way, I really think that poll is up in like the 80s somewhere, 70s or 80s. Uh, Josh Carlos, this rate, who beats Roman? Breaker or Gunther? 
I'd be okay with Gunther, but that's heel against heel. I don't I don't see them doing that. So they might still go with Cody later on. There's Seth. Uh you know, you gotta have Jey Uso in the conversation. I don't see Jey Uso as their heir apparent to Roman with the titles, though. I just don't see it. It's like I felt the same way about Sami Zayn. Right? It would be a great moment. A great capper to the story if he took the titles from Roman. Uh, but I don't think he's the guy. You know? So is it Cody? Is it Seth? Probably one of those two, but I, I don't know. I don't know who else it would be. Uh, Sean Waters. At this point, I'll believe Roman's title loss when I see it. Uh, it was right there with Cody and his family and still did not have the guts. I don't know who or when now. <laughs> Bliss fan, okay. Bliss fan is still adamant that Bray Wyatt will be the one to beat Roman Reigns. Bray Wyatt has not wrestled a regular match since he came back to the company in October. Why do you think that he is going to be the one to take the championships from, from Roman? I mean, realistically, how can you think that he is going to be the one to take those titles from Roman? Uh, powerful one. I know it sucks now, but if they're going with this where I think they are, the payoff will be that much sweeter. Patience on to SummerSlam. I, I hope you're right. It, it doesn't change the fact that this was still a shitty uh, finish to the match. Just the way they did it. A shitty ending to a WrestleMania main event. Uh, Drew McIncock, crowd was crazy tonight. Thanks for the streams. You are very welcome. Uh, Oofman Entertainment feels like Triple H ran night one and Vince ran night two. So maybe they divided it, you're saying. Uh, if that's the case, Gunther would no longer be the Intercontinental Champion, I wouldn't think. Daryl Harrison, thank you for the $4.99. Uh, Cyrus the Virus, hey Cody Marks, got something for you. A one-way trip to the Island of Irrelevance. Have fun with the, <laughs> have fun with the United States title. Oh, man. Uh, Fire Panda. Dropping a $103 super chat. One, I hate Brock Lesnar. Number two, oh my god, I didn't think you would actually play Racing Queen. Thank you so much. You are the GOAT, and Roman wins, LOL. It just felt like the right time to play. Racing Queen is such a good song. I said, I, I have to at least start one of the nights of WrestleMania with that song. Uh, Kumar Jenkins, that ending. I hope you get some sleep. Michael Pavin, Salamaster, listen to me when I say. I have never seen an arena clear out so fast. Everybody is currently walking in silence on my side of the stadium. I am playing Marvin's Room by Drake in the car. Oh, man. They're shell shot. You know, those people in that stadium, they were ready for the celebration at the very end. And I guess, you know, Triple H figured, hey, we already gave them the big celebration on night one. We're going to do what we want on night two. But the fans in that stadium, even the ones that were booing Cody when he first came out, by the end of that match, I mean, they, they, they were up, man. They had them. And then they just took a dump all over. Buffman says, after tonight, try to convince me Roman won't beat Bruno's record. Because Bruno was champion for eight years. And Roman, no person, no top star in WWE is going to be able to stay healthy for eight straight years. So if they want to run Roman into the ground until he gets hurt, they can do that. I think they're asking for trouble. Imagine after all this time, all the people he's beaten, all the time he's been champion for. You know, Ro Roman doesn't move in the ring. Look what happened to Shane tonight. Or poor Dante Martin the other day at the Ring of Honor show. You're only one injury away from catastrophe. What a horrible way for this reign to end if it were to end on an injury. You think this guy's going to stay healthy for eight years? Uh, Merlo Williams, night two did not deliver. Some good action, but overall disappointing. Thumbs down from me. Also surprised they got that bleed to stop on Balor so fast. That was scary. Uh, yeah, that's that's what Staples will do. He'll close that thing up. 
Steven says, I was shocked at the finish and I love that. Plus this opens the door for Jay to beat Roman. Uh, Kevin, oh my God, thanks for all the content this weekend. You are always the MVP of Mania Week. Thank you very much. Todd Warner, they couldn't sell the company tomorrow with Cody as champion. Now, could they? Oh, apparently not. I guess they uh, maybe maybe Endeavor stepped in and said, look, you're not taking those titles off Roman. They've already made their first decision. They said, we're, we're keeping the belts on Roman Reigns. Uh, Aqua C6 says, Roman beats people better than Cody made no sense. Uh, Nick Pulsifer, Roman against Cody in a Rocky II-esque story at WrestleMania 40 in Philly. Just don't bring the idea up to CM Punk. Keep up the great work. Well, CM Punk will say Rocky what? Rocky 2? I haven't even seen Rocky 1. Uh, Zach Grant says Jay White will be champion. Yeah, Jay White will be the uh, maybe the U.S. or the Intercontinental uh, a year from now. Uh, he will not be Universal Champion. Uh, Mystif uh, Mountains here. Rhea is the one to beat Roman. Rhea has said that she wants to wrestle men uh, in that company, so. Uh, Vitamin Vision TV, Shane McMahon himself. He did. Uh, Matt McClure, they did not give it to Sammy so they could give it to Cody, and then they didn't give it to Cody. <laughs> what is happening? Who then? Uh, Joey says, with Corey Graves insinuating that the feud is not over, could the title change actually occur with Cody beating Roman at Madison Square Garden as a callback to Dusty? Well, there's no pay-per-views with, uh, you know, Madison Square Garden that are scheduled. And at this point, you're not going to change the title unless it's on a big pay-per-view. So, no. Down bad. This is the first time in forever where I've legit contemplated why I watch WWE. Like, there's no one left to take the titles from Roman Reigns. Paolo with the 10 bucks. I don't have an issue with Cody losing. I believe dissension has to occur within the bloodline to lead into Roman losing the belt. The problem is what the match became when the ref bump happened. I agree. I mean, that's my biggest issue with it. I was really enjoying that match, and the fact that that was the finish they came up with was... Uh, I just think it did a, I think it did a real disservice to the men in the match and I think it did a great disservice to the fans. The Reed Report, most overbooked WrestleMania main event since WrestleMania 2000. Granny hell yeah, funniest ending to a WrestleMania ever. Thanks for all that you do. Uh, Rodimus Prime with the 20 bucks, great match, but a weird finish in the main event. Overall, night one was better, but WrestleMania as a whole was great, four out of five. Jordan plays, Cody will ask for a rematch and get repeatedly refused, then will be forced to enter Money in the Bank and win to challenge at SummerSlam. Be patient. Luger Rhodes and the <laughs> Luger Rhodes. LOL, Cody was wearing red, white, and blue just like Lex. Uh, Jordan, thank you for the uh, $5 super chat. He says, the difference between SummerSlam and WrestleMania is that Cody did not face enough adversity. Number 30 at the Royal Rumble doesn't do it. Here we go with the adversity. The comedic genius tried telling you guys Cody was not ready. Uh, Alex Silva, six months of part-time Roman yawn. No thank you. Uh, the Sheriff of Patty. Yeah, Raw still has no champion, by the way. Uh, the Sheriff of Patty's going on 12 years as a fan. Your pay-per-view reviews are second to none. Do I dare dream that Gunther could be the dethroner, or will it still be Cody? Uh, Cody seems to be the obvious choice. Uh, I just hope that people are still as up for him as, as they were tonight. You know, I hope so. Jet Set. WWE had the ball at the one-yard line in the Super Bowl, down by five, and they fumbled it. Turnover. Asinine ending. Alex says, if they did not plan on taking the belts off of Roman, why have Cody wrestle him 
kill his momentum should have just had Roman face a part-timer. They would have. That's the whole that's the whole point. They they wanted Roman against Stone Cold Steve Austin. They offered supposedly they offered Roman to Stone Cold. And Stone Cold either rejected it or just never got back to them. And they wanted to do Rock against Roman. So the the idea was never Roman and Cody. It was never Roman and Sammy in the first place. It was Roman and The Rock. Or it was Roman possibly against Stone Cold. And when that didn't happen, we ended up where we ended up. So we almost got the part-timer. Uh, Jordan Play says, Now Roman has the opportunity to admonish the Usos on their title loss and hear Cody asking for a rematch because he got rightfully screwed. Money in the bank is the way. Well, look, I mean, Money in the Bank is not until July. So my hope is that they have uh, enough compelling television to get us there. Uh, and that they don't just reach a point where people start to just grow tired of this. So if they can find a way to fill television between now and then and get Cody to the place that he needs to be and then get him to Ford Field at SummerSlam, then more power to him. Uh, but I, again, I still feel like that finish tonight was uh, not the way to go. Merlot says the pattern was keeping the status quo. No feel-good moments of any uh, or for any of the dearly departed this Mania week. Uh, L says since Roman was winning, they should have had him beat Rollins instead. Cody could have beaten Logan Paul and they wouldn't waste Cody's Royal Rumble win and Sammy losing. Bones Jones was there for both days, had fun with dad and brother. Well, that's awesome. Yeah, I, I, I had fun. Those first WrestleManias I went to, you know, they, they got longer and longer, and they weren't as fun by the end there. But uh, typically, you know, I go to those Mania shows, I always had fun. Uh, the Undertaker. Shane tore his quad. Keep up the good work, Solo Monster. Night one was better. Asuka and Finn should have won. Uh, was that official? I mean, did they make an announcement about the injury? I, I have not checked, so I do not know if there has been any medical update on Shane. I'm actually checking right now because I'm curious if there was an official... Uh, here we go. Shane McMahon injury update. Yeah. So, Triple H announced at the press conference that Shane McMahon tore his quad. Which, uh, if anybody knows about that, it's Triple H. There you go. Torn quad for Shane McMahon by doing a leapfrog at WrestleMania. Uh, Lamar Smith. I know this is stupid, but I think they are trying to turn some of these into backlash rematches, which is dumb as hell. I think the backlash match would be a trios tag match between the Bloodline and Cody, Sammy, and KO. Uh, I could definitely see that. I'm not sure Roman will even be on that show. So it might not even be Roman. It could be uh, Solo, Sokoa, and the Usos. Linklex, Night 2 had no genuine WrestleMania moments. Yeah, it was, it was just bizarre. You know, we had... It, it was almost like they front-loaded it on Night 1. You would think they would spread it out a little bit, but they didn't really do that. Uh, Kevin Velasquez, buy or sell Shane's appearance tonight or Vince's last year. Well, I mean, Vince didn't tear his quad, so I guess he wins by default. Omando Bastian with the $100 Super Chat. I'm going to tell you all with a tear in my eye. Sala Monster is the greatest podcaster of all time. Been listening since 2012. Appreciate all your hard work. Happy to contribute. Let me know when you are ready to come back to the Bahamas. Oh, I, I, would, lo I would love to be there right now. I haven't taken a vacation since then. It's been three years. I would love to go back there. Uh, Liquid Sharingan, it is not the fact that Cody lost. It is how he lost that is infuriating. Not to mention Balor, Dominic, and Sheamus losing. They chose the wrong winners. Andrew Kugel, they booked almost to perfection the first night and did the absolute opposite on night two. Almost every finish they got wrong. 
Uh, AWOL, shout out to the little girl in the Bianca Belair entrance. Triple H said that she lost her mother today and still went out and performed the entrance. Had Triple H in tears during the press con. Is that true? I did not know that. She's very young, too. I mean, the girl, the girls in the entrance, uh, there was one girl who was, like, bending all the way backwards and stuff. It was like a dance routine. She was very young, too. That's, that's awful. Yeah, I didn't know that. Uh, Andrew Jorlog, been listening to you since WrestleMania 30 and TV tracks before that. Andrew, Andrew's been around for a while. Thank you, Andrew. Uh, Ghostro says night two was WrestleMania 32 all over again. Uh, the chosen one with the 999. I have been saying this for weeks now and people were too brain dead to understand. And after tonight, it's pretty obvious that this was Vince McMahon booking. People need to stop ignoring the obvious here. Uh, Brian Becerra with the $100 Super Chat. Night one, far better than night two. Uh, Brian, I, I would agree. And uh, thank you very much for the $100. Uh, yeah, people people used to think I was TV tracks. <laughs> clips, clips of the show would go up, and um, people would think that, like, uh, you know, oh, why'd you put that in the headline? Why, why'd you give it that title? I'm like, I'm not TV tracks. <laughs> what are you blaming me for? Uh, Uncle Gumbald, this is what you get when you dress like effing Homelander. Get wrecked, Cody. Uh, Jazz Jackrabbit, back for the second night. Uh, this ending reminded me of WrestleMania 28 with Rock and Cena. Zachariah Sitchin with the 1999. This WrestleMania was on par to overtake WrestleMania 17 as the greatest WrestleMania of all time, but then that ending derailed that. Triple H better write one hell of a follow-up to this because right now it is looking like mistakes were made. Andrew, let's just call her Bachi Blackheart. I don't know. I don't know what's what's happened to her since she got called up to the main roster. Uh, Mr. AJ Allday with the fifty dollar Goonthar super chat from earlier tonight. Feels like a lifetime ago now. Uh, I enjoyed WrestleMania as a whole both nights. I'm in the minority that I love the Roman uh, that Roman won. I am extremely happy that Bianca won. Triple H said that little girl out in front of the dance troupe lost her mom today. Still performed amazing. Thank you. Uh, Jazz Jackrabbit, with WrestleMania 39 done, how would you grade Triple H's work? It's an excellent WrestleMania. Uh, I just don't... Again, I, I keep sound like a broken record here, but the, uh, the way that they did the finish... I mean, the finish itself, but just the way they book that whole thing was uh, very disappointing but on the whole it was a very very good wrestlemania uh james griffin solomaster why can you tell me just why do you bother to torture yourself by watching the putrid sea of garbage such as wwe putrid sea of garbage very uh it's very poetic Bender McSimpson, cheers for all the work this weekend. Long shot call won't hold you to it, but who main events WrestleMania next year? Roman Reigns. Against who? It doesn't matter. <laughs> Just plug a different person in there. Uh, I think it'll be Roman Reigns. Uh, Andrew says, when Russell Crowe was cutting the Hell in a Cell promo, I'm surprised they didn't cut to... Uh, the rabbits, what, what is that? The rabbit toes supporter? I spotted one in the crowd. There's always one. I don't know what that means. Uh, Dan Teller, are they, are they just still holding out hope for The Rock? They're always holding out hope for The Rock. Take The Rock in a heartbeat. Riley Archer, I don't understand Sokoa's ejection earlier in the match and then doing that finish. I was waiting for the referee to notice at the end and call a restart. Yeah, again, it just, it was dumb. It was just very dumb. Uh, the way that they 
the way that they did that. Did I miss anti M Bishop? All right, we'll go back. There he is. Anti M Bishop 07. Thank you for uh, letting me know. Just do one night of WrestleMania if they're going to continue to half ass book like tonight. Just sad to watch the indies delivered this weekend. There's a lot of great wrestling this weekend. You know, WWE was not the only game in town pumping out great content. So, uh, shout out to all the other promotions as well that had shows this year. Uh, we have uh, Dan Teller. We talked about Dan. Riley. Yukio, thank you for the $25. Mr. Scythe. I swear they did this as an elaborate long game to humiliate Cody. And I'm having a hard time believing otherwise. Damn it, Dan, with $150. Super chat from earlier. Uncensored, unbiased, unstoppable. The solemn monster sounds off. Thank you. Damn, damn it, Dan, you're, you're going to make me emotional. Thank you very much. We've got over 1,600 likes on this stream, which is awesome, so keep it coming. Hit that thumbs up. The Cheeseburger, getting sick and tired of all these product placements on my wrestling, whether it's AEW or WWE. I'm here to see pro wrestling, not TurboTax, Mountain Dew, or cereal. It is annoying. Wait until you have to hear about Snickers the next time. I think you need a Snickers. Somebody give uh, Cheeseburger a Snickers. Cheeseburgers and Snickers. That's the uh, the American cuisine. Slipper House Extra Extra Mid Pay-Per-View. IC Match was the best. Night 2 was just the steam off of a good fart. Wow. Uh, SSJ4 Omega. I feel bad because I watch WrestleMania on a TikTok live stream. Is that where we are now, where people are watching on a uh, on TikTok? They're watching these pay-per-views? Uh, Juan Sanchez, would you love the idea of KO against Roman at WrestleMania 40? It'll make KO have a uh, three-year run like Roman. I don't know what that says. Also, people here would boo the ads. KO against Roman at WrestleMania 40? No. Uh, plus Ultra Adrian, I'm sick to my stomach from that sorry excuse of a finish in the main event. I know Vince is not booking, but it felt like a Vince McMahon finish. Maybe some Resident Evil 4 will make me feel better. I'll be playing some more 2K23 this week. So. Oh, by the way, the uh, first installment of Sound of Gamer 2K23. Up right now for channel members. It's been up for a few days. Uh, everybody is going to get it tomorrow. So later today on Monday, keep an eye out for it. We'll get Sound of Gamer. Uh, Bob Rouse, WWE was re-entered or has re-entered into the Bob Backlund two long-term booking era with Roman Reigns winning tonight. Brian Collins, thanks for all the content this weekend. I don't know how you're doing it, but I enjoy it all. Just wanted to say thank you. I appreciate that. That means a lot. Andrew says, what elements make Bianca a baby face? She smiles when she comes out. If you have a WWE uh, superstar coming out and smiling that much, it's because they're a babyface. And they tell everybody to make sure that when they come out, they smile. That's how you can tell the baby faces from the heels. Uh, Roderick Welch with the 10 bucks. Overall, a good two nights of Mania. No Lashley, LA Knight, or Stone Cold, but disappointed. The crowd was pumped for a Cody win. This felt like the moment he might win it later but it will not be the same that's what i'm worried about del fuego in the chat i love you too bro. jay lopez with the 4.99 hey j-lo is uh watching on the stream shout out to j-lo i knew she was the real dirty dan i wonder if wrestlemania 40 will break the streak of night one being better than night two french fry slut no, oh, we haven't heard from French Fry Slut in a while. Someone on TikTok live broke their TV. Well, that's pretty stupid. Alex, have a good night, Alex. 
Uh, plus Ultra Adrian Snoop has more WrestleMania wins than Asuka. Roderick Welch just to see Hulk get beat up. Thanks, Solomonster. Uh, AJ, what are the odds the ending was changed to keep Roman as the face of the company until a sale is completed? I put nothing past these people. Anything's possible. Cuba Starks, Roman top 10 all time. Uh, he might be when his run is over, but his run is not over yet, so we can't judge it. Cassidy Groom. Thank you, Cassidy. Jazz Jackrabbit. I can tell you're disappointed you're not wearing yesterday's shirt. I was hoping to see you add Seth's red shoes, sunglasses, and a, and a feather boa. You know, I wore a feather boa uh, for Halloween once, and uh, I did not realize how dirty those things are. I looked down at my hands. My hands were filthy. I said, I'm never wearing a feather boa ever again. Uh, Blair Davis, I know WWE won't go this route going forward with the bloodline, but imagine Triple H books a Roman against Orton match once he comes back healthy at 100% at this year's SummerSlam. Yeah, Orton... I, I don't know what the deal is with Orton. I don't get the sense he's coming back to the ring anytime soon. And uh, he shouldn't be the one to beat Roman either. Paul Carpenter, I gotta see I got to see Snoop save the show. Shane got hurt. Sneaky boy. So WWE passed on a white hot Sammy and a hot mania crowd for Cody. It's going to be difficult to catch lightning in a bottle a second time. They screwed up big time. BW Roses, I don't know if anybody ever notices this. It seems that. Uh, with a few exceptions, anyone that comes out first, they almost always lose. EJ. I'm scared that we are eventually going to get a Shane against Pat McAfee where the winner gets Vince's inheritance. I hope I did not speak that into existence. Well, we're at least not going to see Shane for uh, nine months at least, so. Gary Koschuk with the four bucks. Best WrestleMania in a long time. Intercontinental match almost gave me an aneurysm. All hail the amazing Goonthar. All hail. Anderson Blitz, WrestleMania overall left me with a lot of feelings. Retro Mint Man. Eddie Guerrero stole my super chest. So nice I had to read it twice. Uh... Wapa with the two bucks says, uh, I've been solid. I don't know what that means, but it sounds nice. It sounds like a compliment, so I appreciate that. Uh, Bobby's World with the $150 super chat. Deflating is a good word for tonight. Seamus lost. Cody lost. No Lashley open challenge. Still a damn good night of wrestling, but I am certainly not all happy and fired up like I was last night. As you basically said, the theme of the night is now what? Jonathan Corky. Great show up until the final crossroads attempt. Went from a top five all-time mania to a top ten. Adrenaline left in my soul. Uh, Angel Silva says, uh, is Braun Breaker the man to beat Roman? You would have to get so mega over because you know there will be people saying it should have been Cody or Sammy. I, I don't see it being Braun, though. No. WWE Wrestling and Gaming, that main event finish was a bigger L than the Cena Theory match. Oh, yeah, because it wasn't the main event. It was the opening match, so it's like apples and oranges. Uh, Dr. Dakota Scorpio. By 2028, AEW Delayed Forever will finally be released before Roman drops those titles. I said GTA 6 will be released before AEW Fight Forever. The next, the uh, James Cameron... What's that movie? Avatar? Is he doing another one? The next James Cameron Avatar will be out before AEW Fight Forever. Uh, James with the $10 super chat says, I don't know if casual fans can wait until SummerSlam to see Cody 
before others beat Roman. Uh, not pulling the trigger tonight gave me Lex Luger vibes about Cody's momentum. Hope I'm wrong about that. Red Emissary of Darkness. That image of Cody and the rubber chicken says it all. HL, thanks for all the work you do. You make these shows much more fun with the streams and the podcasts. I'm very happy that you are happy. Why well, do what I do? Smitty, do you think the Vince do you think Vince McMahon is the one that hired Shane O'Mac? And brought him back. Yeah, I mean that that doesn't happen without Vince at least uh, being made aware of it. So he still owns the company. If he didn't want Shane back. Shane would not have been back. D. H. Sires. After two hours, I'm finally more calmed. Even though I still think Cody should have won. As long as Triple H remains in creative, I will have trust in the story. Powerful one with the $10 Super Chat. By the way, I should uh, shout out the 3,000 plus that are still hanging with me here. 2.30 in the morning. You guys are like machines. Although you're probably all in different time zones. So. Powerful One says the story has one chapter left. The death of the bloodline theme is Roman is nothing without the bloodline. They're building to SummerSlam where Cody beats Roman without the bloodline who have left. First timer. Rematch for only the WWE title to split the belts. Now, I, I feel like when Roman loses, he's got to lose it all. You can't go... There's an expression. You can't be half pregnant. You're either pregnant or you're not. There's no such thing as being half pregnant. You can't half ass this. He either loses the titles or he doesn't. Juan Ocampo. Point to the sign one last time. Yeah, that's right. The uh, the sign is going to be coming down here. The WrestleMania sign. You can't see it now, though. So you got to wait until later. We're getting close. We're, al we're, we're almost... Uh, well, we're, we're getting closer. Uh, first timer says uh, we did that one already. Incredible Jake, you think they are building to a Rocky three story with Cody as Rocky and Roman as Clubber Lang? WrestleMania 40 will be in Philadelphia next year. Do I think they're doing a a Rocky three story? Uh, no, I don't. Uh, Jonathan, to be honest, Roman seems more like Apollo. Angel Silva. If Bruce Blitz was still around, he would have went off on Roman Reigns winning. Anybody still remember him? He was the dude that hated John Cena and Roman Reigns. God, I haven't heard that name in, in years. Uh, Buck's Basement. Asuka's tweet. I imagine she wins at Backlash. I have not seen her tweet yet, so I don't know what she said. Bobby's World, they should do the Rocky 3 story with Cody. LOL. Uh, Austin Blancet, Roman's title reign is getting long in the tooth. A lot of stories have been sacrificed for his run. Edge's return from injury and now Cody. Uh, Pharaoh's perspective on wrestling. I'm going to buy that stock if they merge. Oh, that stock is going to go way up. I think tomorrow or, or uh, later this morning, probably. And, and look, I'm not giving financial advice. I'm just saying, probably going to be a good time to get in on that stuff. Anti M Bishop Observer just reported that Shane tore his quad. Brandon Vasquez, if Sheamus and Cody won along with featuring LA Knight and Lashley in matches, this could have been an all time classic mania. Still the best Mania since WrestleMania 30. Stadium J was there live, and I cannot believe. No LA Knight. BS. Zizou. Will fans start to turn on Roman now? Turn on Roman? I mean, he's a heel, so... 
well, the whole point is to go out there and get booed. If they turned on Roman, then they would turn the show off. They wouldn't. They wouldn't buy merch. They wouldn't tune in on SmackDown. I don't think that's going to change. Uh, Eddie Marquez, how does a guy like Cody's entrance go over in Saudi Arabia? It's fine. Hulk Hogan used to go to Canada and real American, and everybody would go nuts. I don't see how it affects his uh, entrance. I, I don't see how it affects Cody in a negative way. I think it'd be fine. Uh, behind the Fiends. Tonight's main event finish affirmed to me that Vince McMahon is back in creative. He's got a hard-on for that rock against Roman Reigns match. That was kind of Vince's problem that got him in trouble in the first place. Getting a hard-on. I think he would learn his lesson. Sam Dankman Weed. Roman should change his name from Roman Reigns to Roman Retains. Also... Was Westside Gun the one who threw the rubber chicken in the ring? I didn't catch that. So I don't know. Bobby Lashley, the way he is tweeting, indicates that he's pissed. I boy, I, I got a lot to uh to check on Twitter apparently when we're done here. Look, if he really is legitimately upset, he's got every right to be. I would be pissed too if I were him. Uh Jay Lopez, thank you. Uh, Lion-O. Nice Thundercats reference. Uh, Triple H thought, smashing my chair isn't so funny now. <laughs> That's one of the better Super Chats. Triple H getting revenge on Cody for smashing the throne on that AEW pay-per-view. Oh, I forgot about that. Uh, BW says, barbed wire steel cage rematch. Rhodes against Reigns at Backlash. Uh, Bernard Frederick... When Cena came to the stage in day one, did he tell the Make-A-Wish kids, uh, I got a job to do or something to that effect? Yeah, I mean, he's, he usually says, like, it's time to go to work or something like that. Usually he's talking to Stu, the cameraman. He said something like that. I mean, what else would you, what else would he say? What do you think he told him? You know, I'm going to, you know, I'm going to beat all your asses when I come back? I and mean, what, what what else would he say? I'm sure he had some words of encouragement and said, look, I gotta go to work. Uh, athletic, oh, did he have a job to do? No, that's not what he meant. Uh, athletic geek, I don't like to be a jerk, but uh, anyone that thinks this will be better later, I need a hit of what you are smoking because you are laughably wrong. The last two months were the best times, but they failed. RDG. At this point, the only Ray Roman will lose is if he defends the belts in the 30-man Royal Rumble and enters at number one. And he would still win. Behind the Fiends, to me, this finish should have been Solo goes to the back, but Jay comes out later and acts like he's going to help Roman, but betrays him and lets Cody win. Uh, SSJ4 Omega, non-WrestleMania topic, PlayStation versus Xbox. Uh, PlayStation. Wink the Cosmic Grandma, Charlotte should get the Fiend to be her protector and come back as a Dark Queen. She is the GOAT. I thought it was the best match on either night. Hey, Bliss fan, what do you think about that? What do you think if Charlotte got the Fiend to be her protector? See, I don't think Bliss fan would like that because... Basically, you're suggesting that she replace Alexa Bliss. And, uh, I don't think that's going to go over too well. Uh, huge ass. Was that WWE's Starcade 97? No. I mean, it, you know, it was... No. No, it was not. Starcade 97 was a different beast altogether. I can't say that it was Starcade 97. Uh, the Rock versus Sting. I'm guessing Cody will start feuding with Solo for the next months. The past time until SummerSlam. Well, they better have more for him to do than that, because that's not going to cut it for the next, you know, fucking five months. They better have something a little more interesting than that. Mr. Ozone. Uh, Backlash is looking skippable. Thanks for the great streams. And can we get one more pointing of the Mania sign? Uh, I will do that after. Once I go back to full screen. Uh, Yusuf 
Considering this company's desperate need for a baby face these last few years, it's shocking to pass up on a perfect chance like this. How deflating. It's a risk. You know, it's it's a risk because Cody got over and you don't want to squander that. You know, you want to do everything you can to keep him, you know, as 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 hot with the crowd as you possibly can and yeah i mean we're gonna we're gonna have to see how the crowds react to him now coming out of this you know they did it in such a way where he got screwed it's not like he fell on his face or anything like that but even still it's a risk retro koh night one was far better i don't mind roman retaining but sheamus got robbed disappointed the sheamus thing really just yeah the sheamus thing was a real bummer too many bummers on this show Seamus, Seamus losing really was uh, very disappointing. Uh, Darth Panic. Night one was great. Charlotte against Rhea was my favorite match, followed by the triple threat. I think WrestleMania should go back to one night. Concerning the finish, I knew Triple H would not forget about Cody breaking the throne. Uh, Jay Lopez. Taskmaster and the Midnight Rider against the Usos. And uh, what is the deal with Cody using the pedigree? He, he's got a, a fetish for Triple H. I don't mean that in a sexual way, I don't think. But, you know, the, the, the breaking of the throne, the pedigree, the way he talks about him in interviews. And, you know, he, he's, a, he's a Triple H fan. Uh, RDG, where do you think WrestleMania 41 will be? I hope it goes to Vegas. If, if WrestleMania goes back to Vegas, I would have to consider going. All right, they got that new stadium out there now. Uh, stadium J, Sala Monster, is the only one to end Roman's reign. Uh, Griga just gifted five channel memberships here at 2.30 in the morning. We got five new members of our family here on YouTube. Let me see those uh, custom emojis in the chat. Todd Warner, have you lost your passion enough to do an emergency sound off if Raw or SmackDown is really bad? We haven't gotten any emergency sound off worthy terrible shows since Triple H took over. You know, it's either good or not so good, but nothing so terribly egregious that I feel the need to just, uh, you know, go live immediately after. Plus, I'm streaming after Raw now anyway, so... If there was a need for me to rant, it would be on the Raw stream. I wasn't I wasn't reviewing Raw Live until August. That's when I started doing it. Uh, all Pro Sports Talk, thanks for getting me through junior high, high school, and college. You helped me through depression many times. You are truly one of a kind. Well, All Pro, I hope you're doing uh, a lot better now. I hope everything is good on your end. And uh, thank you for the kind words. Shadows 25. WWE being stubborn. Perhaps they want The Rock to take the title from Roman and will wait a year. Well, that would be pretty fucking terrible if they were going to put the belt on The Rock. The Rock does not need the belt. You do not put the belt on The Rock. They already did that 10 years ago. He took the belt from CM Punk. That's it. No more. Uh, better belt. Winged Eagle or Big Eagle? The one over my shoulder right there. Winged Eagle all the way. Michael Darcy, is there any way of salvaging Cody and his story? Uh yes. Yes, they can still they can still tell the story. Jay Lopez, I'm not watching AEW until they release their game. Well then I guess you're not watching AEW anymore. I hope you'll at least be on the streams with me. Uh Kennedy. What do you think of an eventual Logan Paul versus Pat McAfee match, either at SummerSlam or next year's WrestleMania? Battle of the social media stars. I feel like it's uh, probably inevitable at some point, but I also feel like there's a, a good chance we're going to eventually get Pat McAfee against Corey Graves. Carl the Crab, speaking of Twitter, did you see Lashley's likes tonight on Twitter? Seemed very pissed the way he was used. Can't blame him. All right, so maybe was it was it tweets he was liking and not tweets he was posting. So maybe I misunderstood. But 
my, my point still stands. He has every right to be upset if he is. Uh, Andrew Kugel. Here is my wild guess. Jay is going to win the belt and be a transitional champion and drop it to Gunther. I mean, I, I could see that. Yeah, it's possible. I could see it. But uh, I still don't think that Jay needs to beat Roman when he does for the belts. I don't think he needs to uh, win the championship. Turtlehead, do you think it's possible that Cody did not want to win? I would think he has a little bit of creative influence. He does seem to love working people. I, I absolutely not. <laughs> that finish tonight was absolutely not Cody's. There's no way. There's no way that Cody had anything to do with that finish going down the way that it did. Uh, God of Seduction, Rubber Chicken, 316, Lashley, Luger, Snoop against Roman. And Griega says, just got home, have, uh, or hope everyone gets home safe. Mania was fun. Griega, thank you for the, uh, the gifted memberships as well. That was very nice of you. Well. That's, uh, a lot of super chat. Thank you for all of the uh, support. We're not done yet, though, because you guys blew past the goal, and uh, that means that we are going to do one more WrestleMania edition of Be the Booker. Ladies and gentlemen, it is now time to be the Booker. There he is, still with his two championships, the tribal chief himself, Roman Reigns. As we uh, begin this edition of Be The Booker. Actually, you know what we're gonna do? We're gonna do something a little bit different. I'll tell you what we're gonna do. I didn't do it last night. I'll do it for you guys tonight. We're gonna kick off here with the match stipulations. How about we do that? We're gonna pick a stipulation first. And this stipulation will, apl will apply to all three of these matches that we're gonna do for the men, the women, and the tag teams. Let's see what kind of match we are going to be booking tonight. We don't do this one very often. We don't, we don't do the stipulations very often. I'm not Vince Russo. Not every match needs a stipulation. So these matches are going to be dog collar matches. All right, so all the matches that we are booking tonight are going to be dog collar matches. So keep that in mind. On the men's side, we begin with Karrion Cross, Nowhere to be found here at WrestleMania. He was in the Battle Royal the other night. He got dumped and uh, not, not mentioned, not spotted or seen anywhere at WrestleMania this weekend. Karrion Cross in a dog collar match. Going to go one-on-one -on -one with Eric Bischoff. <laughs> Uh, not that I wouldn't mind seeing Eric Bischoff uh, in a dog collar match get the, uh, the the shit kicked out of him, but yeah, that's uh, that's that's a fail. Let's go to the ladies. I don't know if I've ever seen a women's dog collar match before. Not not in uh, WWE. We begin with Medusa. Well, I'll tell you what. If anybody was going to be in one, it would be Medusa. Medusa going to go one-on-one -on -one in a dog collar match. Oh, look at this with Rhea Ripley. That's a match right there. Rhea Ripley and Medusa in a dog collar match. That is a great fucking match. And now we go to the tag teams. There have been some classic uh, tag team dog collar matches. Obviously, last year, the Briscoes, FTR. Begin here with Enzo Amore and Big Cass. Or should I call him Real One, right? That's his name now. He's not Enzo anymore. He's Real One. I saw he was in the news today. Some uh, controversy with MLW. He's not working there anymore. Oop, wrong button. Enzo and Cass in a dog collar match against K 
Kane and Daniel Bryan. There's enough marquee value in that match. You, you had me at Daniel Bryan. How can I give Daniel Bryan anything but the bell? Two out of three. We redeemed ourselves, right? I think we had a pretty bad night last night. We redeemed ourselves with Be the Booker tonight. First time we've done the stipulations in a while. So there you go. And for the final time, say goodbye. The WrestleMania sign is going to be coming down tomorrow. So I'm pointing to the sign here for the final time. Can't wait to rip that shit down. It's been up for a month. I'm ready to take it down. Uh, this has been an amazing weekend. Uh, a lot of great wrestling, some uh, very disappointing things as well. But, you know, you take the good with the bad, I guess. Uh, but you guys showed up, and you guys uh, really made me feel special. All your support. It really does mean a lot. When you guys turn out like this, again, we had well over 4,000 people tonight. All the Super Chats, all the new members. Uh, it's just, it's incredible. So, thank you for another very successful WrestleMania weekend. Let's do it even bigger. WrestleMania 40 next year. Keep an eye out tomorrow for Sound of Gamer here on the channel. And uh, let's see what happens with this WWE sale news. If uh, there is actual news about this, I may do a video tomorrow. I'm going to be live with you again no matter what tomorrow night. We're going to be talking about the post-WrestleMania edition of Monday Night Raw. Will we get some debuts? You know, Might we see someone like Braun Breaker called up? Might we see the debut of someone like Jay White? I certainly hope if Triple H and Nick Khan have any surprises for us, they're better than these surprises they had at WrestleMania. Uh, final super chats here. Uh, let go, let go my nuts. There you go. At least Miz got his win back from Shane. And, uh, Fawaz. What's going on, Fawaz? Thank you for the super chat as well. And I believe, let me just make sure that we are all caught up. Yes, we are. We are all caught up. All right, I'm going to get out of here and try to get uh, maybe three hours of sleep. Be well. Stay safe. Thank you for all of the support. And uh, be sure on your way out, if you have not already done so, please to uh, subscribe and also hit that thumbs up button. Love you all. See you for Raw tomorrow night. Take care. God of seduction. God of seduction. You are a crazy person. You. You're something else. God of seduction got me back on here. <laughs> Just dropped a $90 super chat. At the very end of the stream. Thought I was going to miss that, didn't you? says, uh, one day you will have a YouTube play button hanging up. Dawkins and Gable were great this weekend. Gable was funny in the Snickers ad. I'm telling you guys, Reigns is retiring with the belts. We are only in the third inning. That was Reigns and Heyman at the press conference tonight. Yeah, here comes the money in D. Forget Shane. Here comes the money here on YouTube. Hey, uh, God of Seduction, thank you for the $90 Super Chat drop. That's the, uh, I moved the Beth Phoenix one up, as you can tell. Now now it's a little a little less. Now it's 90 bucks, but uh, wow. Wow, amazing. Anyway, all right, now I'm out of here for real. Take care, guys.
Shout out to Fire Panda. Love you, Fire Panda. 